all these guys out here. Ooh, look at him. I think he's looking at you. Who, me? Yeah, girl, don't you see him over there looking at you? No, I don't think so. Girl, he's so good. Mercy, mercy, mercy me, oh my See, you got to have a sexy girl, I can't deny Since you're looking all sexy with a voice that's kind I can't help but say, James, I got women on my mind Only she know what she do to me She got me reaching for a dream that's 60 feet away from me Dark and sexy girl, you need to quit Now, nah, if you sexy, where does this shit fit? So many things, girl, I got to say You just got it going on and you make my day Woo! You know, I had to climb a little bit to warm it up a little bit, baby. It's getting hot up in here. It's hot on these YouTube streets. I almost said they flip that camera and come out of all of this since all this is going on. But um, first of all, I want to welcome everybody for sure. Um, I want to thank everybody for joining me, coming on, calling me, texting me. There's a lot of situations going on, but y'all, I'll be happy most of the time. I don't have time for the negative energy, but since we're going to talk today, I'm going to bring a few things to the forefront. If anybody want to come up here and ask questions after I'm done, I'll drop the link. Um, but I want to welcome everybody first, right cross in the house. Welcome, right cross, Miss Lorsey. Always much love, my girl, for years since 2017. She's been rocking with me for sure. I want to thank you guys and anybody who joined me later after I call the names. If I don't get you in, um, I apologize, Queen Miss BB. Thank you for writing me, Miss BB. Enjoyed um, our Sunday. Um, gathering that we had so i really appreciate her for letting us know that and joining us so welcome queen um mr tate in the house love drive welcome brother tate and hope all is well to you 
Um, you don't know me, but hey, Essie and the Mars. Well, I don't know you, but we can get to know each other. Miss Shy, Miss Shy, Miss Shy. I think I done created a monster, you guys, because Shy don't know how to be Shy no more. Shy coming all the way out the box on me. I got to calm her down a little bit with all the energy she got, but much love to you, Miss Shy, for sure. Brother Fred, my brother to the end, Mama Denson, I love you guys so much. You're always considering and thinking of me and making sure no matter what that you check on me. And that's something that you don't have to do. So for that, I really thank you so much. Brother D. Ham in the house. I love Brother D. Ham and Mama Watts. And I hope she's doing very well. And um, I just love you again, Brother Watts. I mean, um, D. Ham for the testimony that you shared this Sunday, people are still talking about it and emailing me and let me know how they really enjoy Sunday. And really that was our gathering. That was our spiritual gathering together. Um, you know, we'll recap more on that on Sun, um, Friday on the recap, but I just wanted to put that out there. I thank you guys for showing love too, as well to each other and how courteous you guys are on the box. Miss Dee Dee, hello, Miss Dee Dee. I hope all is well to you, Miss Lincecy or Miss Montgomery. I hope all is well to you. And let me go, Miss Valerie Queen. She's a beautiful queen. She's been rocking with me since 2017. The people that's in this box right now, the people that I trust because I know that they're going to have my best interest. Um, a couple of my people, I need to make sure I start making them moderators too so I can have more moderators, especially when I know that you're watching over me and watching my back. Um, I want to address one thing right off. Somebody said that Dham blocked them out of the box. Dham can't block you out the box if he don't have a wrench. That's the only reason why they give him a wrench, just to show you guys he's never carried one. Probably wouldn't even know what to do with it in YouTube because he's just getting ready to start on his channel. So if anybody heard or said that Dham blocked someone out the box, that was a lie. And, you know, that's what we do. We try to squash it before it gets here. Um... First of all, let me tell y'all something. When people put out negative energy on you, it just brings it back positive. It's going to be what it's going to be no matter what. I'm good with it either way because it can't get me into heaven. Whatever you talk about, I mean, you can't get me to heaven. So it doesn't matter. But I want to say also believe half what you hear and not what you see unless you know for yourself. Nobody can tell your truth better than you can tell your truth. So, like, I just want to bring it to you guys before we get started, because Sha want to come up and ask me some questions, and it may be a few more people. The question that she asked, she may have wanted, somebody else may have wanted to ask these questions and didn't ask the questions. So, here we are to answer the questions that you would want to know. But let me start from the beginning. So, when she get up here, if there is anything that has been missed, then I can answer it after I say what I have to say. Um, and I probably put some pictures out if you haven't seen where well, I used to do a lot of hair shows back in the day and I had a personal photographer having this personal photographer. He was good people and I have to trust people when I deal with them. And matter of fact, if y'all want to go find him, his name is Zane. My sister know where to go find him. Go find him. That man ain't going to tell you nothing about me. That's what I know for sure. Not Southern hospitality, but go find him if you want to. And so, make a long story short, throughout the years, I did hair shows. And one night, I just wanted to see what I would look like for myself. And I took some pictures. I didn't take the pictures personally. I got Zane to take the pictures for me because he was a well-known photographer in Georgia. Y'all can look him up, probably can find him if you know what you're looking for. And so... Some people may, and you put it down in the box. Have you ever took some new photos? But new to me is all your clothes all the way off. I'm not that bold. So it was just a little tit, a little booty, a little cootie, you know, they had a fingers in the mouth a little bit. It was just pictures. From what I understand, I have never, ever did video. Did I think about doing a, a, a nasty video? 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt. But my husband's weren't on that level, so I didn't do it. I mean, I wouldn't do something like that with a stranger. So if you guys wouldn't do that, that'd be fine. But did I think about it? Sure, I thought about it. I want to see how I get down. I already know how I get down. But it would be different if I saw it on the video. But I've never done that. Again, did I think about it? I said yes. 
would I do a porn video with someone like a girl, a girl, a boyfriend? No. Would I do a threesome with a girl or a boy? No. Have I ever did a threesome with a girl or a boy? No. Um, at this time, that just was not my thing to do. Um, I think anybody, if you want some type of sexual high energy, you know what I'm saying? You might want to try things, but you may not be bold enough. I was bold enough to do those pictures. That's as bold as I went. Um, have I asked, been asked that before? Sure, I have. But my body was too personal that I just I just couldn't do a threesome. Like, what I'm, how I'm, how that work? Like two women and I, like what I suppose liquor or something? How, how does that work? Because I can't get down like that. Now, brother, you can bring them all day. Um, and when I took the pictures, I guess it was about 20 years ago. Um, again, if there's a video in existence of me, straight up, someone emailed me and say they saw where a video was put out that I put out a sex tape. Well, shit, if it's a sex tape, can I see it too? I mean, because this cat won't high dollars for something. Like, why would you want to pay high dollars for a video that I'm on? That's 20 years ago, but baby, you better know it'll be worth it. And it will go platinum. If you get the pictures too, <laughs> bombshell, it will go platinum. But I was just saying, like, I got me and him up saying they want to see this footage. I don't have the footage. So if anybody feel free with their lying asses, if they got the footage, put it out there, please. And put them bomb naked pictures of me out so y'all can really see how I'm rocking. But I had those pictures somewhere. I'm not sure where I put them. I put them in a, a, a secure spot. I just got to think what I did with them because I have stuff still packed up. Um, straight up, y'all, I'm bold enough to put them pictures out here if I find them. So if I find the pictures, I'm going to put the pictures out here. I probably can't put them on YouTube because they're provocative. So they would flag my channel. In 2012, right after I kind of start going into the Mary situation, and I started getting ready to prepare for the reality show later on that year, because I think it was like at the end of the year when I really started searching for Mary Harvey and start getting ready to go do the reality show. Um, a guy called my phone. No, he got my phone. He hit me up on Facebook and he said that if I didn't do what they wanted me to do, that they would put those pictures out and it would ruin my reputation because I was Fred Berry's reruns widow, a reruns wife, whatever. I was his widow at the time. So now I'm looking at like, why would you want to go put some pictures out of me and what did I do to you? None of that started until I started dealing with all this Steve Harvey stuff. But let's go ahead and play this game. The pictures, only one could have collaborated to get those pictures where I'm from is Columbus, Georgia. But if anybody want to go find Zane, that's his name, Columbus, Georgia, that's where I'm from. Maybe y'all can find him and get the pictures. Y'all send me another set of them if you truly want to. Um, it would have been my sister, the one who got bought out on fried chicken. Her and her man supposed to had the pictures, and they were going to turn them over to Steve Harvey. But at the time, the guy Zane, him and his wife broke up. I guess he left the pictures up in the attic. The girl, his wife, was going with some other dude, a cab driver or something like that. And he he got the pictures from her. She was mad about the pictures, and they were going to use the pictures against me. Now, if you really just want the pictures, they're in, they're in the Columbus, Georgia courthouse as well. Because they were going to try to, I guess, extort me for these pictures and said that they wanted $100,000 for these pictures. Now, I told them to hold on for a moment because if you want... The, me to give you a hundred thousand dollars for the pictures well how does that work i just didn't understand so i told the guy to hold on for a minute and i said here you go three two three seven five eight whatever 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 he said what's that i said that's the number to abc wait a minute i got cbs nbc and every other news station that you needed to be you're not gonna blackmail me because you feel like you said something and I'm going to fold. There is always two sides to a story. It is what you choose to believe. But when people just want to get up and maliciously lie on you, really listen, y'all. This is flesh. 
these are people that are Satan, pretty much, I would say, because there is good and there is bad. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because you're going to have to be held accountable for whatever you say and do. So really, I don't really like to respond to bullshit. But because people watch me, because people admire me, because people listen to stuff and they want to know, then I'm going to be honest enough to say what I have to say so you'll know it for yourself as well. So at this time, does some new pictures exist? Yes, 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt, baby, they exist. They exist. Do somebody got them? I have a set of them. The courts in Columbus, Georgia has a set of them. I'm not sure who else has a set of these um, pictures. But if you have a set of the pictures, then just release them. I'm not really, I'm not ashamed of my body. I'm not ashamed of what I did. When you're younger, you think, you do things. And maybe nobody in this box has ever took any sexy pictures of themselves. I have. I wanted to see what I look like. I might could have been a Playboy situation at the time. I don't know. But I just want to see it. Not even thinking that later on, 20 years some later, that these pictures would even come back up into my world and into my circle. So people got to realize, really, like my life would not even be where it is right now if I was to be on the Internet and you guys wouldn't know anything about it. But I said if something comes forth or someone wants to say something, I will bring it out. Because if you ask me about something, I'm an open book. I have nothing to lie about. If there's a sex tape, I would like to see it, too. But you're not going to see my head on no sex tape, you guys, because I've been married most of my life. This was the last 10 years of me that I decided to be celibacy for myself. Whatever anybody else had to do, it doesn't matter. It's not what I say. It's always what I can prove. If somebody really wants to know that, then put the lie detector test up. I can tell you for sure on the other party team who's lying, I bet they won't swear on their grandkids that I said anything of some of the stuff that they're saying. I said, I swear on this nigga grandkids that everything he's saying is a lie. And he can't prove anything, especially about me not coming, like coming on to him. Someone said they heard the video where they said that I came on to this brother that was over here at one time because I care less to even call his name. If I wanted that nigga, I could have had that nigga. I said, I don't mess with 48 years old, 47. I don't mess with nobody up under me. One. Two, I would not have done that because he got a girlfriend. And he His girlfriend was riding in his vehicle with him. I'm not a disrespectful chick like that. So that wouldn't have happened. I looked at him as a family member more so than sleeping with him. Somebody said that I said to ask him, can I see a dingling picture of him? I would ask to see Raymond Dingaling for ask to see this nigga's Dingaling. If you really want to know the truth, if y'all just play that game, if that's the case, right cross. I can go across the way and say, right cross, can I see your Dingaling if I want to see somebody Dingaling? Matter of fact, all you got to do is Google Dingalings and you can get any size, any picture, any color, any online. So why would I be so disrespectful to call a man and say, yo, homie, can I see your ding -ling? Can I? Like, come on, y'all. Do that even seem like me? Now, have I had men sending me ding -ling pics? I can go on my Facebook right now and pull them off. I don't watch it because what I'm going to do with a ding -ling that's on a picture? What can I do with a steel picture of a hat? Congratulations if you got one. Okay. Congratulations, you sent it. Okay. But what does that have to do with me? So, no, I've never in my life called no man and said, Yo, homie, would you send me a picture in your dangling? That ain't even caliber. You want to send it to me because you're trying to get what all I got. I don't care what you packing because if your mind and your heart ain't right, your bottom part ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't want none of you. And that's just to keep it real. But if you're just going to sit up here and throw some out while you putting people up here talking about people dingling, it's three players on this map right now. You get what I'm saying? And more men than that. So if I'm just going to say that, I've already been with right across the scene. Here's if I want to go and get again. Can I see yours? I'm sure he will it out. I don't know if Raymond would. He probably would too. I'm sure half of these brothers on this damn platform, if I asked that, they would whip it out. But I'm not that type of sister to do that. I feel like it would be disrespectful. I'm sure Right Cross can answer that. No, he even I answered that. He even I answered that like that, no, because I was with Right Cross. So I might have did tell Right Cross with his out at one time at that time. Um, so don't answer that, Right Cross. But 
um, I have to say my sexuality, like I don't put that out there on Front Street. How I get down in the bedroom, I don't put that out on Front Street. Um, I've been married before, and I know that when I was in relationship, some of the men that I was with, they discussed my sexuality behind closed doors. And then that made their uncles, their brothers, their cousins, their granddaddies want to sleep with me. You see what I'm saying? So that's why I don't get down like that. And I had to check a few niggas after the fact, because if you marry and then you separate, then you got to worry about what did they tell these people? And I've had in all my marriages, at least they friends, a relative or someone after I divorced, they came to me in some kind of way, including reruns people. One of reruns best friends came to me and tried to do want to do me. So I'm just saying, yeah, people really want to. And then unless you're going to take a lie detector test, don't bring that bullshit to me because I don't have no reason to lie about anything that I say, especially on my body. It's a lot of whores out here. It's a lot of whores out here. Let me say that one more time. It's a lot of whores out here who cannot hold their body. So don't get upset with me because I ain't slept with a man in 10 years and I can hold my coochie and you can't. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I chose to give my body purity. I chose to give my body to God. I chose not to let someone violate my body. If you didn't do that, why you hating on me? Because you can't hold your coochie and I can. I mean, I'm just that type of sister. That's why I got niggas running behind me 24-7. If I want that, a brother can run behind me. But what's up when you come running behind me? What you got to offer on a bigger level? You can't be broke and disrespectful too. I've been with broke and disrespectful and that's why i'm sitting by myself right now because i'm saying that in general because i needed a space where essie could find herself some of the things i have done in my life if you ask me and you find out if you want to know i'm going to tell you but if i'm telling you right now 100 from what i understand there is no sex tape that exists one of the semi-honest shadow doubt, there's some badass pictures out there of me, and I'm cold-blooded on the pictures. When you get a copy, please send them to me. I refuse to let someone get me angry, upset, because they don't like me, or you upset. Like, most men, you know, you get angry because a woman rejects you. The first thing you're going to do is lash out. You're going to start crying. You're going to start whining. You want to make 20,000 videos. You want to call me out my name. You want to say all those things. It still ain't going to make me want you. And it's still not going to make me want to deal with you again. I just have to keep that out there and be 100 with it. And when I'm with someone, I'm with someone. If I love someone, I love someone. I don't really look at what a man has in his pockets. I look at what he brings from the heart. At the end of the day, I decided to sit by myself because there were things about me that I knew for myself that a man could give me. Or if I didn't like the way he gave it to me, then I don't want to be bothered with that. My sexual drive was very high. So I'm not going to play no games with nobody. And I know yours is not there. And I might want to try this and you don't. And that's what happens in sexual relationships. Even when you're married, you may want to go one way and he want to go another. And that's okay too. But that's for you to explain. That's to you to decide what you want to do in your relationship. So I'm not going to waste my sexuality on someone and it's a waste of time. I don't have time to do that. I'm not going to waste my love and understanding on a man and it's a waste of time. My body is my body. So whatever I want to do with my body, I can do with my body, baby. It's my body all day, my body. So if I wanted to sleep with a thousand men, I could have done that. Um, you can't project me to make me into a whore because I can count the men on one hand I've been with. Besides being married, I've been single for 10 years. A hoe is a hoe. And if I was a hoe, I would be a very good hoe. High pipe. I would be a high price paid one if that's what I wanted to do. But that's not in my mentality to do that. That's one. 
I'm cold enough to pull any female. If I wanted a female straight up, I'd have went and seen a lot of bull butch women out here. I could pull a female real quick. I would never go with a broke female. That's one. I've never like tried to holler at a female because I don't do female. If it came to a, a broke bum nigga and then it was a female and she was a dyke, I would take the broke bum nigga because I don't do women. But if anybody want to say that, then it's fine. It's never what you say. It's always what you can prove. I'm not sure why people feel like you feel some kind of way when people want to talk about you. To talk about me, it just makes me greater. To talk about me makes me know that you you thought about me. Men who sit up there and constantly do that, it's that they wanted you and they couldn't have you. Now they don't know what to do because they're mad that you threw them away and you didn't want to be bothered with them at either. That's fine. All of that's fine. But at the end of the day, when you start trying to like be all abusive and you trying to get all hyped like you bad, monkeys jump up and down the trees. Monkeys go slide. Go be a monkey and go jump up and down the trees. Go be a monkey and swing from tree to tree. Ain't nobody got time for all that. Do whatever you choose to do. But if you're going to tell something, at least tell the truth. At least let it be um the real thing so right now for the people who thought there was a sex tape out of me unless someone knows something that i don't know that is uh, um there is no sex tape um that chick right there i don't even want to call her name she said this person blocked said she blocked her we was we, there was so many things going on you guys so i'm gonna get back into that in a minute i really want to address this um sex tape thing so if people want to put it out there i don't care you want to call me out my name i don't care bring some ass to get some that's why i say nigga or female because all you do is wolf at your mouth i really don't care if steve harvey got a picture of the video or the tapes because that's where it started from then tell his raggedy bald headed ass to put it out there i don't give a fuck what he do he can do that and at this time you on a whole different mindset for me y'all niggas will never be able to lock me up and put me in jail because of a sex tape so you think if you put a sex tape out it's gonna stop me from talking that's a letter that i got yes if you don't be quiet we got those pictures and we got that tape and if you don't shut up talk about steve harvey we're gonna put it out i'm waiting i need my copies i had to twitch my thirst on that one because i need my copies of them tapes too child secret ain't safe in the family ways Nancy Berry got new pictures. Civil rights act was child. I just had to quench my thirst on the chat. Right? Draw them all. Okay. Let me keep on going. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Made me want to lick my lips a little bit. Damn that juice. Um, right cross. Right cross is the only one seeing the pictures. So if anybody else. He'll know what he said. He was one of the only people that saw him when I got him. I ain't sure who else seen him, but I know Right Cross did for sure. I know that. Um, sister girl said that somebody said she blocked him in the block box. Um, about a month and a half ago, some stuff went down, and and like whoever went on homeboy page, stay on his page. Without without me, he wouldn't have a reputation right now. Nigga, I gave you your platform like I gave everybody else's. And you cannot make good videos and get good views of anything else. It got to be my name on it. So go ahead because you're my whore and I can make you a hoe too. Because every day you put a video out about me, that makes me know that you keep thinking about me. It don't matter if you think good or bad about me. You waking up every day putting videos up, fine. I damn sure said I make a video every single day about Steve Harvey because he lied on me and he's blackmailing me and now you got people saying yes sir we gonna put out that video on you yes sir we gonna put out them naked pictures on you yes sir we gonna tell that you got those new pictures yes sir you gonna do what steve harvey say do y'all can go eat shit and die that's what i feel that's what i feel like everybody should do that's what i feel like would be a good opportunity for all of you guys because what you ain't gonna do I'm not going to get on here arguing with you guys who no, no more. I'm not going to be worried about if there's a warrant for my arrest. Throw the warrant. I'll tear it up. Go get it. I'm going to do it like you did them court papers. I'm going to step all over it. But what I will not do is sit up here and let you try to silence me 
because there's some naked pictures of me out on the internet. If you go get my sister, let me tell you how to order my sister. Get my sister two family packs with two jugs of um, tea. Um, get her some biscuits. Make sure you get her some syrup and some honey with it. What else we need, sis? What else we need? Then go get the pictures. Get all your, get all your Scooby snacks first. Tell her my older sister because she got the pictures, right? She going to give them to Steve Harvey. And Steve Harvey going to give them to his mutts. Or Steve Harvey going to give them to his monkeys. So go get them, Michelle. But make sure you got the two-piece. It's the two family pack meals with everything in it. Get the juice and the syrup and the biscuits. Don't forget your silverware. Make sure they get you some napkins. And then go and give them the pictures. Girl, get some out of it. Don't be letting them sit over there and pimp you, my sister, for a Scooby snack. And you ain't what they want either. They want Essie. Everybody want Essie. Everybody want Essie. I want to be like Essie. I want to be like Essie. That's what y'all say. I want to be like Essie. Every female talk about me. I want to be like Essie. I can't stand Essie. I'm going to be that. I could get a rap out of all y'all jealous hookers. Jealous hookers. I got young. I got old people lying on me. And really, I'm just going to say side. I want to say the first part. The young lady who was blocked at the box that this young lady was talking about, um, I gave her her name. She said one day she woke up and she felt like she was going to kill herself. And she was in the car. And she heard my voice on YouTube and that stopped her. Now, what I don't like about that is you're an old battle ass liar because now you're saying that somebody else saved you and I dogged you. So let me put this out there. I do feel like you're an old liar battle axe now. Whatever you do at this point, I don't care. You can't whoop me, but I said what I said. I meant what I said. But since we brought this up, when I found out that she did get blocked, I immediately called the people that I thought may have blocked her. It was not Dham because Dham don't have a wrench. I knew he had did it, but they saw some comments, and they didn't like the comments, and they confronted her. Y'all get too petty in this box. I'm going to pay a fight for my life, and you worry about some shit that really ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but okay. So make a long story short, her, her mother had died. So when her mother died, Immediately after I found out, I called her a couple times. We had conversations. This lying old chick, old battle ass, gonna say I didn't talk to her. Like, why would you do that? And you think you're gonna make it to heaven? Y'all crooked old ass, gutter rat, slow ass old women ain't got nothing better to do than sit up here and start mess on the internet. She should be ashamed of herself. If you hear how she was crying on a video and talking like she knew God, and I fell for it, that. That's what makes me don't want to give people chances. Old battle lasses like her and this boy's mama. It's just what it is. And then when we was talking, she said, well, Essie, I want to know, do you think it's wrong if I don't go to my mom's funeral? I told her, you're sick yourself, baby doll. I said, don't worry about what nobody say. That's your mom. Your mom know you loved her. You was taking care of your mother all this time. Like me and her having a girlfriend conversation and this old battle ax go over there and lie like that. It ain't even that kind of party. And I was going to try to see her when I go out to Chicago. I am so glad that I did and, and old battle axes like that make me don't want to have a relationship with nobody on this internet. Because why would she lie like that? You ain't, your husband ain't paying you that much attention that you got to get be dealing with people who sit up here and lie. You just as worse as Satan yourself. I really, boy, if I said what I really wanted to say, then they'd be like, oh, Essie, she sit up here bullying people. I'm just going to say what I felt, but I want to say more than that. But because at the time she said she was going to do this and take her life and all that, I felt bad for her. But why was you going to take your life? You clearly couldn't know God because you was going to take your life. Didn't God say if you kill yourself, it's a sin? But you up in time, you're going to take your life. And then you get your bald ass back up on this internet and you lie like that? And why? You must be a gutless ass person to know that you're going to take your life. <laughs> you might want to took it for a reason. For what reason? Because what you low down? Well, I ain't mad that you low down and that's what you want to do. Just don't call me no more with it because I don't want to have anything else to do with her. And whatever she said over there, she's going to reap that and more because she is an old, she's an old liar. 
She's an old liar. She lied and just made up whatever she wanted to make up. I called her. I want to make sure she's okay. She cried on the phone. She even tried to say she was trying to be on homeboy team and bring me and him back together. But I didn't want to have that stress on her. I told her, don't do that. I told her whatever's going to happen between me and him, I could deal with it. I don't care that she's over there. It's so much more that she lied. I did not hear what she had to say. And I don't give a dang because I gave this woman my personal number so she could have called me. That's how I tell you how raggedy and shysty she is. I was going to catch myself, say something else. That tells me how raggedy she is and how shysty she is. She had my personal number. So she thought d -Ham blocked her. She didn't like something that went on. Even when she told me my person blocked her, I called her. Y'all asses up here arguing a box about little silly stuff. If you hadn't been conversating about something that then wasn't relevant to what I was talking about, you probably wouldn't even got into no argument for that to even happen because everybody be on this box waiting for me to come on, but you have your own conversation. I'm not going to keep doing none of that you get what i'm saying because really i don't know none of y'all like that and at this point i don't have to be on in that i'm not up here trying to get likes, shares, scribes and views whatever the video make is what it makes one two or three but there are actually niggas 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 on this internet trying to make videos about me to try to take me you ain't doing nothing but helping my credibility um and this time next year i probably will be doing a documentary about all of that and that ain't nothing but about the goodness of god just like god showing you in your own terms you guys believe half of what you hear and none of what you see look at diddy diddy been rolling like this for years and been doing all that shit he been doing and he thought he got away with it low down niggas don't get away with it it's just when god wanted to happen that's when it's going to happen. I can't really reflect on what people say about me or think about me because I really, really don't care. If you sit up here, you want to make a thousand videos about me, any man straight up that making videos about me, there's some type of way that you're fascinated about me and you wanted me. And that's including Steve Harvey. 100% beyond a shadow of doubt. You can say what you want to. We can do what we want to. But as I said, I've been going and dealing with some certain things and trying to shut some cases down. But I'm going to put some of the videos out with text messages of personal conversations where this nigga changed his name. And I made sure I put significant stuff in there to make sure it was him. He changed his name and he said certain things. You shouldn't have said it. And then you want to step in and lie and act like you're some kind of motivational speaker. Also today, I had a media outlet reach out to me because they wanted me to do a whole like little situation, sit down with them and talk to them about the stalking, the bullying, who's doing it, why they doing it, which way they doing it, and what can they help me do to shut this down and put all them niggas in jail. And I'm really thinking about doing it. I haven't made up my mind yet because I got a few things going on, but I am in process with talking to him about it because I want to make sure that everybody knows the truth, not what somebody want to say. You know what I'm saying? You got whiny women sitting up here trying to talk about me. I'm going to be honest with you. This really ain't what you want. And these little young petty sisters who sitting up here trying to join the Kang or hold on to a nigga because you want his dangle -lang or whatever, that ain't got nothing to do with me. What I'm saying is I don't like dumb stuff and I really don't care for messy people. And that's why I don't deal with people just like this lady side. I gave her that name. I'm glad she changed her name. God is going to deal with her because in my heart, I cared about her and her little liar, raggedy, ratchet old ass went over there and lying like that because you depressed well go be depressed and do whatever you gonna do i wish you hadn't called me that day you could just stay in the fucking car if you want to ask me if you really want to truth go talk to your son your daddy your husband whoever you just really shouldn't have called me that told me who she was as a person she's mentally lost some kind of where she's looking for some kind of support because she don't get it at home and so you want to get on this internet and lie or say certain stuff it didn't hurt me it just really changed at you with God because none of y'all people on this platform can get me into heaven. I'm going to get to heaven by myself, not what people think they want to do. So I don't have time to be busting at somebody because somebody blocked somebody out of fucking chat or you mad about that or you some kind of old lady. You into your feelings. Your family ain't dealing with you. Your husband ain't dealing with you. Ain't nobody talking to you. And then someone called and said that the person that I'm talking about, I call her side. Um, 
said that I didn't support her. You got a damn husband at home and don't support you. Go buy you a dog or go buy you a cat. Do you know how many people want me to support them? Do you know how many people that I'm dealing with? Do you know how many people in this box I deal with every day? Do you know how many people call my phone and you want to say I su don't support you? I called you when your own family didn't call you when they was whining and talking about you to come to your mama's funeral and you asked me that I think was wrong. So miss me with all them lies that you playing with because at the end of the day, Y'all all just making yourself look more stupid. And really, if this girl hadn't called me today and wanted me to address these few things, I wouldn't have said nothing else about this. Because at the end of the day, it's it's a storm getting to come. And it's going to hit like a tsunami. So what people on this phone, on this mic, and they think they whooping, and you working for this, and you working for that, and you working for this, and you got money and power, God can take all that away. And he can take it away in an instant. And believe it or not, that's why I'm not a really addressing a lot of things because I'm behind closed doors doing what I need to do. I don't have to address anything on this mic. I'm going to address it the way I need to, and I'm going to address it with God. And then God will take care of all these niggas that's sitting up here trying to come at me. I did put the link in the box. Um, so if she want to come up and she want to ask any questions, I just want to put that out there. If anything, I love you too, Deham, so much. Yeah, you know they're going to be in the bushes. And I, I think it's impressive that Men, not women, men, gutless, spineless, cowardless men, uh, men come out of a sister like me. I think that's like a, a, a domination thing. You know what I'm saying? I think that's powerful to find that those many men that I ain't slept with, that I ain't touched, I ain't rubbed, I ain't kissed, I ain't did nothing with them. And you coming like that? And you can't even tell me why? And you upset with me? Why? And you saying all these things? Why? That dude over there wouldn't be saying that, but I dumped his ass and found out he was a liar. And I said I didn't want to be bothered no more. So then I make twenty thousand videos about asking over there, over there, over there. Keep all that shit over there. No one cares because at this time, what's important to me is staying true to who I am. The more you talk about me, as Miss Jackie say, the more I grow in the strength of God, the more I grow in my strength in myself. If I want to cuss you out, I'll do that too. I'll do that too. And I like what Miss Valerie said. Miss Valerie said, it ain't males, Essie. It males, not men. Yeah, they males. And if you put the F and the E on the end, the beginning of it, they females. Put the F and the E on it. That's what I'm saying now. Females coming out of all this bone and brown sugar because you got female tendencies. Here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, how are you? Fine. How are you? So, Hi. okay, go ahead. Let's go. Um, I just, uh, I said, so I see you have told your supporters a lot about, you know, you out of your own mouth, that you have been facing for 10 years with Steve Harvey. You have been up against a lot when it comes to Steve um, and when it comes to your life and your family members and friends. No one has experienced the level of trauma I would call it, you have been going through for 10 years or more. No one is able to uh, relate to your experience. We as your supporters can only imagine and not relate. In my opinion, no one can tell your story better than you. It's very understandable that your intentions in helping Mary and her children and others, why you keep your guard up with uh, opening yourself up to new people due to the past experiences you have you have had came up again. So, number one, so with the Steve Harvey case, is it true that there were only three doc three so documents that are out there and available? If yes. How is it possible that you and another person have the same sealed documents that claims they're not a um, spokesperson for 
Steve, yet he has the same show documents and they don't represent him in no way. Yet they have an awful lot of information you have and you are marriage POA. Number two, you want to go by one by one or you want to go all the way? Go one by one. Number okay. One, there would be no there would be no logical way that they would have to have those same documents I have or anything of that magnitude that I would have unless they were pertinent to the case. It said they were sealed. No one can get a copy of a sealed case in the documents unless they are pertinent to the case. They wouldn't even let me get a copy of the documents and they put me in the case. In the beginning, there was a lawyer by the name of Daryl Paget. I think I got a video coming out about him. And I also have an email from him. I received documents from an email and that's how I found out that Mary was being abused. And that's how I found out Winton Harvey was being abused. That's how I found out Steve Harvey was supposed to be taking anger management because Daryl Paget sent me court documents never saying they were sealed. So I have those documents that are attached. So those documents, when Daryl Padgett said that he never said they were sealed. I really didn't find out anything was sealed until I found out they said they had a gag order on Mary. But if you are a power of attorney, I can get anything I need, want, or speak on because I am working on your behalf. So I should be a pertinent to anything that got to do with Mary or if it was you, Shy, or anyone else. And I was a power of attorney, the POA, which would give me credibility enough to walk in there and get any of her documents I wanted. In 2013, in 2013, Mary was not able, was that 2013? No, and yeah, 2013, up to 2009 to 2013, Mary could not get a copy of her child abuse of Winton Harvey. It wasn't until I came back and asked them myself, what well, was 2017? I'm not even sure. I got to go back and look what 2013. I don't care which one it is. We got the document and they held the document showing that Steve Harvey had beat his son and they wouldn't give it to the mother. I called him and say, hello. Hello, my name is Essie Berry and I'm a civil rights activist. I'm trying to find some information, please, if you possibly could help me. There was an abuse that took place in yada yada time and this is the mother and this is the father. At this time, from what I am concerned about is that someone took it upon themselves to try to cover this up and this whole police session can pee up on investigation. So if you cannot answer my questions, plain on police department, can you give me your watch commander or can you give me your chief of police? Oh, you can't? Oh, you can do better than that? Well, what can you do? Miss Berry, we will have someone release the child abuse reports to you. I said, oh, okay. So at that time, I sent Mary to the police station. The same woman that denied the police reports in 2009, they gave them to Mary at that time. And at that time, I was not Mary's POA. I was Mary's, I was, was nothing to Mary. Actually, I was just a civil rights activist. I didn't even start being her POA to 2017. So in 2013, when I found out what happened, I just called as a civil rights activist, not even actually Mary Harvey's POA, and told them that I knew about the abuse and why was that happening. Daryl Padgett started talking smack. He gave me the papers because he didn't want to be up on investigation. Plano, Texas, the police department, they didn't want to be up on investigation because I told them I was going to send the FBI to them for covering up those child abuse reports and they released them. And the same woman that told Mary she couldn't get them, they gave them to Mary after I called the police department and got it. And that was when we was only trying to, I was just only trying to do a reality show. I didn't know Steve had did all the crimes they committed. I didn't know he abused Mary like he abused Mary. I didn't know they had um, basically did fraudulent documents. I didn't know any of that. So 2013, I was just an activist trying to get a show going up. But by the time I found out that Steve had beat Winton and wanted to make Mary sign a, a, a child abuse letter, a blackmail letter, everything changed. 
So if I was really about money, I would have said F Mary and I would have walked away knowing that damn gag order was on her. And I would have walked away knowing he had beat Winter like he did. And I would have walked away knowing all the crimes they committed, fraud, collusion, conspiracy, extortion. He could sue me when he want me to stop. All those things I knew he had committed. So at that time, it's either do or die shy. Do I take my integrity? And I say, go on about my business and get the rest of the people that's going to make this money and get paid. And we do what we're going to do. And let's do this reality show. Or do I stand by what I was born with as a civil rights activist is integrity and walk away from the money. I walked the fuck away pretty much. And plus, they didn't want to deal with it anymore because some of the agents didn't like that I was going after Steve Harvey, knowing that he was a criminal, knowing that he had did those things. But as an activist, and then I saw the abuse, I didn't know how to walk away. So if I was just money hungry, why didn't I just stick with the reality show and leave Mary hanging and just kept my mouth closed and knew Steve had did all this? I could have done that if I was money hungry. Right. And so um, another thing that the celebrity people do, meaning Steve Harvey, P. Diddy, you know, et cetera. Um, nine times out of 10, when they do a gag or NDA, that is them not wanting something to be out that they're hiding. Correct. Because if that is the case, if that wasn't the case, then why would you put someone through that regardless if they talk or not? Correct. That's a good question. And for you guys, um, we going to further. Shy, when she first came to me, she was very timid and very shy. And shy would make a good activist because she'd go by a little, you know, she'd check key points. So now it's kind of like she's a training, but this is like a case too. So I'm showing her certain things and she asked a damn good question. So I'm very impressed, shy. So um, I just wanted to say that. So, you know, like if you want to know somehow how to win a case and you're working on stuff, this is the way to do it right here. So you know for yourself. Okay, now Shai, ask me that question again. As far as the whole thing or the NBA or gag? NBA, okay, that's it. Okay, with an NBA or seal docket, I mean, uh, a gag order. A gag order is pretty much telling you to shut up and they don't want you to talk. If you got somebody and they don't really want you to talk and they don't want to have no conversation with you and they don't want to got talk about the, the situation happen that's exactly what it's for it's to size a person up to shut them up so they won't talk about the situation if steve harvey divorces open back up margie harvey's going to jail steve harvey's going to jail ricky anderson bobby edmund and judge tucker i don't know about judge dry but them five people right there 100 percent they'll get locked up Margie may walk because she'll probably play dumb because they put something called a squash motion on her. They put a squash motion on her so she could not testify to incriminate Steve Harvey. There were only certain things they would let Margie say. Margie should have never even had no kind of conversation in Mary's divorce. If she was divorced in 2005, why the hell is Margie in court in 2007 in Mary Harvey's divorce? Because he was still married to Mary. That's why the hell all this is going on think about it i'm asking people a logical question if steve harvey divorced mary harvey in 2005 why was margie harvey in court in 2007 and 2009 with steve harvey in a divorce case that she had nothing to do with nobody can answer that because he was still married to mary and he turned around and got with margie because you cannot if he divorced Mary um, December the 29th, no, 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 November the 29th. He divorced Mary November the 29th, 2003, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. And then how, when did they divide the assets? How did all that go on? They can go talk about it 20,000 times. If they were telling the truth, it would not be sealed. Let the shit open for itself and make sure that you open it to see where I'm saying it. Because at the end of the day, if Mary was totally divorced from Steve Harvey in 2005, make it make sense? Please make it make sense. Why was she coming back in 2009? Why did she come back in 2007? Why did she come back in 2011? Because he had never really did what he said he was going to do. He kept her gagged. 
He kept her silent and he used the media to influence all of you to think that Mary was crazy. That's why he did. So, right. so he, Steve also, um, did Steve also put in there that he gave Mary three places, but one of the places he was supposed to, um, she was supposed to sell. Yes. Steve came back, the judge came back and took the house of Mary and Steve sold it and threw Mary out the house. One house Mary gave to, a, um, one house Mary gave to us, uh, just gave it away. That's what kind of person did. She just took the house and signed $186,000, just gave it to her. I'm sorry she did that now because that could have been her house. She just signed the deed over because the girl had dogged the house out. The second house, so she needed some money. She, I think she sold a house, she say, to get capital. And then the third house that her and Winter was living in, Steve Harvey went back in the courts, said he couldn't afford to help pay for Mary's um, finance situation, got the judge to take the house back, threw her out the house, and then took Winter. That's how that went. For the court right. right. And so with that being said, why would, um, why would, why would Steve feel like it's okay to give her however many million dollars, what was it, 1.5 or whatever the case may be, and then $40,000, and it wasn't for child support? I mean, I mean, what does that do? You know, I mean, okay, that's a money, thanks, but it still doesn't take back her freedom. It still doesn't give her back, you know, um, things that she lost out on. She, she's, she was gagged. She was placed in um, jail, I believe, or in a mental ward. And no amount of money can pay for that, in my opinion. Well, first of all, he shouldn't have had that type of power. So that's why he feel like he got that type of power over here. That's that's why they trying to gag me. That's why they want me to shut up. Was I served some papers saying shut up? Yeah. And I said, fuck those papers, fuck that judge, and fuck their crooked asses, and go till I said it. Because you will not, as a black woman, because you're sitting on the bench, you think you're going to violate me. You got me messed up. So that's what I felt about the warrant and everything they did. Because they had already did it to Mary, and we watched the world let them do that to Mary and we painted Mary Harvey as a black angry woman and she was a woman who was scorned by a man who said he's religious he's going to be the next one going down for sure without and Jay-Z too but Steve Harvey's going to be one of the people that's going to go down and what I do know is Steve has lost a lot since I've been on this mic complaining and talking. But my thing is for them to keep coming at me now, there is somebody either watching or they're very concerned about because they still want me to shut up. You can make 20,000 videos about anybody I know. My past would have said every day I will be putting some shit out on Steve Harvey until they do right by me. That warrant's not on me, and you're not fucking blackmailing me. So at this time, to know that these people, that they're paying the perfect person, you said we and Spook and all these, all these people that you're paying to sit up and come at me, one woman, that should tell you that there's something that they're hiding. All right, because you have to use these different people to speak for you so that it doesn't, well, in my opinion, that's how it looks. Like, you're using all these different people to use your voice and they're not just doing it for over a span of years as long as you've been dealing with it have a whole history about this guy they know a whole lot of information for them not to be in cahoots i mean that's just critical thinking okay yeah. number two also it's not my it's not my place to tell any parent how to discipline their child. If they were in trouble in the same day to get punishment or in trouble uh, as a mother who has um, whooped my children for whatever the circumstance may be, being whooped beaten or whatever choice the parent decides at that point is considered abuse 
being whooped with a belt and also a fraternity paddle that the parent that the parent um couldn't get through to the child that it took the devices for you it took a bell and then it took a fraternity paddle for you to get your point across to your child because of whatever he did um first of all if that was you me or anyone else we would be in jail for whooping our kids with two 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 different things and there were videos, there was footage, there's a CD of the whips and the bruise on Winter's back and his buttocks area. And then it said that he couldn't pee for two weeks later. Well, he could pee, but there was blood in his urine. That is 100% beyond a shadow of doubt when you use any type of bruising on a kid like that. That is considered child abuse. But I guess his case with Steve Harvey, because he had money, he was able to pay that judge. Because how do you shut a child abuse case down in one state? And basically, in another state, they continue to let it go. You can't shut a case down. If the abuse happened in Georgia, but they closed the case in Texas. You can't do that. You can't do that. Okay. So another thing is that we all have a we are we all have done things that um, we may not be too happy about in the past in our past present or future no one is perfect and and um and i know that you want to see your your tape that's out <laughs> there yet yeah, anyone that decides to release that tape that's considered revenge porn just saying there is no tape if there was a tape of me it would be with one of my husbands and I would think that they would have told me that they were taping me. I just don't go sit on somebody dingling so I can sit on somebody dingling. So you ain't got no tape of me because you can't you can't bring no man to say they got a tape of me and I sat on them straight up or did anything personal with them. So that's one. Um, revenge porn or not, I mean, Steve is about to lose everything that he ever worked for. He has already been losing it. So at this time, they would have a team of people coming at me to try to intimidate me to bring me down but i think i'm one of the few women that have stood by strength now i don't know who this dirty dan is down here and i was waiting for miss k miss k come back up too because i'll pause for a minute if you want to ask a question i for some reason i ain't trusting this dirty dan whoever this person is because they sitting out here waiting to come up and talk to me but um dirty dan if you talk anything stupid i'm gonna take you down but i'm gonna let you finish what you're saying first shy okay and this is the last thing as i as I have shared on your platform, I'm an open book. I put my business out on your platform. I'm no longer ashamed about what I what I uh, have shared. I love you for that. With anyone, yeah. my test or my testimonies that may help someone else. Only God knows what my testimony is for. Correct. That's all I have. Well, I thank you for your strength. I thank you for your honesty. Um, because Shy called me today, asked me questions. I I because I had a lot going on. I didn't know if I was gonna make it on this live, but I got on the platform because I wanted to make sure that I'm authentic, you guys. I have nothing to lie about. She asked me, did I ask homeboy for some dingling pictures? I just told you no, I didn't. You gotta realize like those will be characteristic that's already in me. Like, I just, that's just not my caliber to do that. Now, if you are my man, I probably would, straight up. You can say what you want to do, because I ain't yeah, had yeah. But like, says somebody I don't know, and I ain't got personal with like that, I would never do that. I really like, Shy, that you came out your comfort zone. I do like that you're listening. And if you see something that you would rather ask me about it than accuse me, because there's a lot of people, they feel like they want to jump from side to side. You don't have to stay on my team, on my side, because I can, I'm good at fighting battles, you guys, but it is so much more beautiful that you got other people watching it and paying attention to this as well. So I, I thank you for that. I thank you for your authentic um, self, Shy. I thank you for 
like wanting to be a leader and try to change things. And that makes you just that much more divine. And if I do sometimes feel like I make you feel a certain kind of way, it's just so much because I've never been through this before. That's why, like, I was just a little little chick somewhere back in the country, just kind of quiet to myself. I really don't like this part of me to come out because I stay on guard and I stay ready. So I don't have to get ready. So the average person, it doesn't matter, millionaire, zillionaire or not, you can't beat me on your best day. Anybody can have a mouth game. What you going to do with that mouth game? Run your mouth to talk about people. You know you're lying. At the end of the day, I can swear on that boy's life over there and his grandkids' life that what he said about me is not true. Tell that nigga to swear on his grandchildren. Fuck what you talk. Tell his mama to swear on his grandchildren life. That shit he's saying is true. It ain't true. Tell homegirl who says she got blocked in this box. Swear on my her life that I didn't call the day when her mom died and stuff. See, that's what I be saying. Stuff like that. But niggas will swear on their life and they'll put their hand on the Bible. So it really doesn't matter. All I can do is share my truth. And if something that Steve Harvey doesn't like that I say, then he can get it too. Go sue me. They ain't finna sue me. And do what? That's why I ain't make no move. I ain't finna sue that nigga. I'm going to put out what I want to, how I want to, when I want to, which way I want to, what you going to do about it. And if you decide you want to sue, then fine. For 100% for sure, I am going to put out those three letters, as they're saying, the blackmail letter. I am going to put that out there for sure. I'm going to put that out. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Yes. You have one out. I didn't know. Oh, I just, somebody called me. Can I help you? All righty. Love you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hold on one minute, Jazz. Yes, ma'am. But nobody told me that because that's what I assumed. Okay. Remember, I said I wanted. Okay. So, can I do you want me to call you back or what do I need to do? At the same place? At what time? Do you got anything next week for that? Hold on, you guys. I I have to get a a situation straight with a client. Just give me a minute. I'm on live right now. And what day is that on? Okay, let me write that down right quick. And it's in the same office, correct? Okay. And what time? And that's April 4th. I'll be there. Thank you, Queen. I appreciate that. God bless you. All right. Bye bye. See, you guys, sometimes I only like coming on in the daytime because I'm always. I'm always busy, so so I have to take those calls because I still deal with elderly people and things like that. And something came up one of my clients, and I was supposed to meet her, and they were not there for that. So I wanted to get her another um, time frame in for her appointment. So I apologize for that. And that's why I at least try to come on at five instead, because even with my time and I'm always doing things, I know people may try to call in and get me to do something. Um, Miss K had popped in for a minute. I hope she'll pop back up because she may want to say something. Now, Dirty Dan, you bring your dirty self up here and you talk crazy, you won't even get what we won't even come out your mouth. I'm gonna put you back down. What I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna entertain any disrespect. People gonna be on their platforms doing what they ever they want to do, whatever they want to do it with. But we ain't doing that over here on my page. And I hope that I I in Spain. I hope I explain everything to you guys so you'll understand, you know, where I'm coming from, what it is, Dirty Dan. Hey, I'm a Southern Belle myself, but I do have a question. Okay, Dirty. Are you calling yourself Dirty Dan? You dirty? 
Uh, nah, this is just something off of a show that I uh, used to watch. Okay. Okay, so, okay, I want to ask this. Was Mary gagged after divorce? Yes. Okay, so do you think it's because Steve is a high-profile um, celebrity? That's why it was sealed? I think it was it was sealed because Steve's a celebrity. They committed crimes, and he was still married when he married Margie. They were still dividing assets. The judge told Steve, do not get married till he divide all the assets between him and Mary. He was still dividing assets in 2013, so in, in 2009 as well. So to do that, and here he's coming at me like he's coming at me, and he wants to gag me, that clearly tells me, would it tell you that someone's trying to hide something? If someone tried to shut you up and say, yo, don't say nothing else, I'm going to gag you, what would you feel about that, Miss Dan? Um, what I think it is, he just don't want his personal business out. Do you think that's a reason why? Well, there's a lot of personal business in there, but why why try to make me look like a criminal because you don't want your personal business out there? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure. I get what I get what you're saying. I think more so he put it on you. So okay, before I say that, did uh -huh. Mary give you the sealed documents? No. Okay. I received documents from an attorney. And when I found that the pageant gave me those those documents, then as things progressed, I found out later on they were supposed to be sealed documents. And at that time, they told a doctor, the doc, the documents that Mary did get, that they were not the correct documents. There were more documents. In all actuality, Mary's sister, Ruth, sent me the damn documents in the email. So if anybody would say Mary gave them to me, no, Ruth gave them to me. But when I got the, the documents, they said they weren't the correct documents. Some doctor talked to Bobby Atman, Steve Harvey's attorney, and said that we didn't have the correct documents anyway. They gave the court gave Mary what they wanted. Mary was so stressed out. I was in California at the time. And so they scanned everything in and Ruth was working with Mary and Ruth sent me the documents. That's how I got the documents. And it wasn't all the documents. It's full of 2,500 pages. I don't have 2,500 pages, but I got enough to incriminate them and, and show where they committed crimes. Okay. And do you think um, Steve put a a gag order on you because you were her POA, like you spoke for her in court and due to their divorce being in Texas, do you think that's why you were within the um, documents? Of course, 100%. I was in the documents because I'm highly intelligent. And at that time, they kept making Mary like she was an angry black woman. So that was just like, sister, you came, you told me your man did something. They trying to gag you. Like, you're not going to, I would rather go to jail. And if that's what they want to do, the police showed up and said there was a warrant for me, but they had no jurisdiction to arrest me. And you better be able to prove it. So basically, I have a video where he said that. He said, Texas got you because you were Mary Harvey's POA. Because they thought that I was going to do like Mary and just go away and shut up. You cannot intimidate a person and try to seal them for your crimes or silence them for your crimes and seal documents. And there's fraud upon the courts. In those documents, there is fraud in there upon the courts. And there are documents that could put him in jail and his lawyer in jail. So that's why they want me to shut up. And that's why they took a warrant in Texas against me with a lie because I've never been to Texas. When all this hits, they going to question that warrant by itself. You can't sit up there and try to put me in jail because I was Mary Harvey's POA. That's called witness intimidation. You can't do that. But they did it. So it's it, we're here right now. And no, he don't want his personal business out. But I didn't want to be called a co-conspirator and an extortion is them trying to put me in jail and they're doing it. Okay, so another question. Okay, okay so if the if he, they filed for divorce in Texas, was when you all spoke in California and you was her POA, is was that a different case? Like, was that a case that you all had in California, or was this still a case pertaining to the um the divorce? That's kind of iffy. In 2017, there was a doctor, and they had talked to Mary, 
because I need to know where Mary mental mind was because I had already came back. After I found out Steve Hart was a liar, I sat back and I studied them from 2014 to 2016. After I had spoke to Cat Williams, like I said, in 2016, I realized if I don't say something, I'm always going to be in a rut. I come back in 2017 trying to clear my name. Mary Harvey contacted my bodyguard. When she contacted my bodyguard, she said, Essie, I want to help tell the truth because I know you did not conspire anything against Steve Harvey, nor did you try to extort anything. I said, okay. So at that time when Mary said she's okay, she really wasn't. Mentally, she was not okay. When a doctor analyzed her, a psychiatrist, a week therapist, um, they said Mary's soul was murdered. They said Steve had did so many cruel, foul, violent things to Mary, he had murdered her soul. The court case was called Murder of the Soul, and there is an existence of that because you can love a person so hard, baby doll, to the point that it's almost like you're dying on the inside because they're killing everything. And when they take your livelihood and your child, you pretty much have killed my soul. And the court documents that were in California, the case number was different. The title was different. The accusations were different. But the only reason why the judge shut that case down is because what people didn't know, if you didn't know, in 2017, he was threatening us really bad. And they, Mary went. I didn't go. They tried to give me some paperwork telling me to go. I'm not going to go to Texas because I had already, we was already out here in the lawsuit. So why would I go to Texas? And this was after the fact that Mary closed her case when they started blackmailing me. They threatened Mary. They pulled her in court. They told Mary to tell me to shut up. They had Mary out there and held her in court four hours. Judge Angela Tucker, who should be up on investigation, they held her in the courtroom for four hours trying to make Mary tell Mary to tell me to shut up. I told them all eat boo boo and die and go to hell because if you put Mary in jail, I'm guaranteed you call the media. The doctor that I'm talking about, she was there in the courthouse. She knew I was going to call the media, whoever on Steve M. I would have released everything on the internet. I'm not afraid to go to jail. Whatever happened, the doctor went and told Steve Harvey and the judge what I said, and they released Mary four hours later. And when Mary came back to California to do her court case, they had scared her so bad, she was scared to say anything. After the fact, and all the court case went on, and all that went on, and she shut the case down, they said refer it back to Texas, only because she was scared. Because when the judge was asking her questions, you could hear her heart beating, and you could see she was scared. But we didn't even tell the judge, because she said, don't say nothing. Because I couldn't speak for her. She was in court. If she had not been in court, and had been physically in bound some kind of way, then I could have spoke for her. But she showed up on her own. And when, the, when she was so scared to speak, the judge saw that and she just didn't say nothing. And she went and it was over with before it even began. Because if she's not going to speak for herself, then what can she say? But behind closed doors, I told her, you should have told the judge that Steve was blackmailing you and trying to make you shut up about this court hearing. And then a little bit after that, somebody said she got a big envelope from Steve Harvey because he was getting ready to settle with her. He was getting ready to settle with her and fly her to where he was to shut her up. But then he found out that me and Mary had a little bit of a disagreement. And then he thought he could get back on Mary team and dog her because we had that little bit of disagreement. So he didn't settle nothing with her, knowing that he should have settled in the beginning. Okay. I got one another question. So was murder of the soul its own case? Like, was it a lawsuit against Steve? And yes. was it in Texas or Cali? Cali. And it was murder of the soul. It talked about the things um, he did because she felt like she could not get justice in Texas because look what they've done. They took a case and Mary's been supposed to be gagged for 18 years. That's a long time to gag a black woman. And to know that anybody who's sitting up here is listening right now, to know that a woman has been gagged for 18 years because of a divorce, not because she's killing nobody, not because of a crime. Any woman who sit up there and try to go against this, that tells me what kind of woman they are. Because who would want someone to gag them for 18 years knowing your husband dogged you and did what he did? And if it was you, Miss Dan... You couldn't have beat your son like Steve beat Winton and not be in jail. Me and you would be in jail. A belt buckle and a sorority paddle, we would be in jail for that. And he couldn't, he had blood in his urine, we would have been up under the jail. It's something about celebrities 
they're overlooked to the point they feel like they can get passes. And Steve was one of them celebrities he could pay. When they say money talk, bull crap walk, homie had enough money to pay the whole college county off if he wanted to do that. And he right. did. And I nine, nine, nine lawyers now, nine mm -hmm. lawyers that he paid to throw Mary up under the bus. Nine lawyers for one divorce case. Now, I know a lot of celebrities, they don't like their personal business out in the world. But when you publish yourself in a way that you do, sometimes that's what come with it. So you can't say what you <laughs> want out and then say what you don't want out. Now, for someone to be my kid with a fraternity uh, paddle and um, have whips and stuff on his back, no, Steve was wrong for that. He was. Um, because you don't do things like that to children. One thing about a child's mind, they never forget. And trauma lasts forever but you have to find yourself within the lord to forgive that person who did that to you in order for you to even see heaven's gate because if we don't forgive how can we allow the lord to how can the lord forgive us if we can't forgive our brothers and sisters you get what i'm saying yes, and so i wanted to ask was the divorce case settled before murder of the soul or after The divorce case was supposed to be settled in 2005. But if you remember correctly, Mary got on the internet and made that whole briefing of YouTube videos, what, 2011? So the divorce was still going on 2011. Murder soul happened in 2017. So they tried to connect the two together so Mary wouldn't be able to speak. But in all actually out there, Mary had told that judge that he she was being blackmailed and really what they did, which they had already scattered. So it was nothing I could say after that. And they continue to tell her that she wasn't able to see Winton. So that was one reason why Mary shut the case down because Winton was still pretty much what like still young and influenced up under Steve. He was probably going to stay with Mary, and then Steve stopped that because he didn't want Mary getting any attention because he would have had she would have had Winton. So basically, Mary went into seclusion and shut up because they was like, Mary, if you keep saying something, you're not gonna have a relationship with Winton. He's not gonna talk to you. He ain't got no relationship with her now. Steve Harvey has made this relationship broken between Mary Harvey and Winton. Okay, so what is your relationship with Mary now? I'm going to be honest with you. I don't speak to her because, one, if I act like I like her, if I act like we're cool, if anything come up, they're going to try to go get her. I mean, it's, I, for whatever reason, anytime they know that I'm in Mary's presence, they try to threaten her or try to say they're going to go get her or they're going to put her in jail or they're going to lock her up. It's always a threat. So because I value her security, you know, more so than anything, I have not tried to reach out to Mary. A sister follows me and says she'll let me know if I need something, if she needs something, they'll let me know. But Mary's scared to be my friend, and I, I can't blame her. I can't blame her because I'm a beast at what I do. I'm not going to fold my tail and run. If she were to need me right now, if they were to breathe on Mary the wrong way, I'm coming. I would light this motherfucker up like Fort Knox, but that's what they know. So right now, I stay silent. I don't try to contact Mary because Mary has been through a lot. I've said a lot. She said a lot, and I'm just very vocal. So I don't want them to try to do anything to Mary. So I'm not trying to be Mary Fran because I do know one of the same beyond a shadow of a doubt. If I try to be Mary Harvey's friend, they're going to go after Mary some kind of way and try to lock her up. So I don't even want to take that chance and jeopardize her freedom. So that's how crucial this is to know that he's forcing her into silence and she couldn't have any friends. And the last thing before we talk, I, I remember she saying, Essie, why me? And I said, Mary, why did you ask me why you? She said, of all the people you could have saved and all the people that you could have helped, she said, you know, lost a lot behind me. Why me? The only thing I can say is because God told me to do it. I mean, what else, what else can I say? I mean, why would I help her? Why would I stay in this mess? Why would I have a warrant for my arrest? Why would I keep voicing my opinion? And if the if the warrant wasn't on me, I'm going to be honest with Ms. Dan, I probably would have not said anything about Steve. But to know that you're going to sit your ass up here and got a warrant for my arrest in Texas and I've not been to College County, you can't jump jurisdiction like that because I saw fraud. So since they want to do that in a couple of weeks, 
probably maybe about May, I'm going to put a letter out and I'm going to show y'all 100% that he blackmailed her. He wrote, they wrote the letter to Bobby Edmund. It says about Steve abusing Mary. It talks about Steve abusing Winton. It talks about him trying to make himself like a good, noble person and Mary look like a traumatized, black, angry woman, a woman, what they always try to make us look like. That letter exists and it's three pages to it. And I'm going to put those three pages out if I don't put anything else out. But they right. were so upset that in 2017, I started putting out paperwork that had to do with the sealed documents. I didn't know the shit was sealed. Padgett gave it to me. Then everything started coming out saying it was sealed. But there were so many crimes. If y'all want to know some of the crimes, please go look up Steve Harvey, divorce con job. Steve Harvey, divorce con job. And go look up on uh, smoking gun. Smoking gun, Steve Harvey, divorce job. Y'all see every crime he committed in Texas. He should already be in jail, not Mary. How did Mary end up being a criminal? Mary has never had a criminal record in her life. She couldn't hurt a plea. But because of Steve Harvey, he gave her a criminal record. Corlanda Harris, he gave her a criminal record. Terry Smith, he tried to give her a criminal record. Essie Berry, he tried to give me a criminal record saying I was a co-conspirator and extortionist. Lady V out of Atlanta, Georgia, Fulton County, he tried to give her a criminal record, making her look like she was a stalker, and he was sitting up there doing stuff to her. So he has a pattern, just like Diddy, just like Jay-Z, just like all of them. Steve Harvey has a pattern against black women and violating them. And Mary was no different, no matter was his baby mother or not. But what I realize is, if he will do that to his baby mama, who am I? I ain't nobody. He will do anything to keep his legacy. He will pay people to do anything. He will do whatever he can to keep a person safe. And so I do like you think that um, she went to jail because her sister gave you the seal documents? No, they say she went to jail for not paying child support. Ah, okay. Well, one thing I want to tell everybody in this chat, love don't hurt. Amen. The Lord puts something in your in your path and it hurts you and it breaks you down. That's love to show you that sin is not what you need. Because at the end of the day, sin doesn't do anything but degrade us from the inside out. And he shows you love by letting you see that. So when you follow his way, you will know what true love is. So, um, you got such I a want beautiful to spirit. You got such a beautiful spirit. Keep that spirit, and, and you know, you know, Miss Essie, you do too. And I just wish all of this could be settled because I really do think that you have a um a, a great mind and you could do something really, really good. I feel like all of this is like baggage for you. I do, and you, I do and, and you so above it. And I feel like we need, you know, I know. You're going to get on Steve, you know, wh whether or not he like it or not. But I think we should bring more conversations to the table when it comes to this channel because it seems, you know, everyone can speak freely and they can speak what's on their mind. And I just think, you know, you, you shouldn't waste your words and your, your your soul on Steve Harvey. Now, that's, that's coming from my opinion. But, you know, everyone is going to do what they want to do. And so um, I wanted to ask another thing. So if Mary, you and Mary don't talk, why did she tell Storm um, that you were scared of jail? And why did the sister write Storm saying that she was taking Mary to the hospital and if something happened to her, it would be on you and him? First of all, I love your spirit. I love your questions and I thank you. And I want to say this before I answer that question. If there was not a warrant for my arrest, so think about it was a warrant for your arrest and so much jeopardizing your freedom, you wouldn't be able to be silent because your freedom is being jeopardized, right? You're going to fight for that. You know how many people get right. locked up? Okay. Um, the thing with Storm was, Mary know that I got some conversations. I have some conversations. This little nitpicky stuff I'm putting out is nothing to the effect of what Mary told me and some things that I know about Steve. Well, she told me if I put these conversations out, that Winter would hurt, hate her for the rest of her life, that the world would never look at Steve Harvey again, and he would be ruined. They wouldn't even be able to call his name. They are so bad. 
So Mary thought that I was going to put those conversations out on store page. So what Ruth did by watching the show, she wanted to let them know if anything happens to my sisters on you, no, you shouldn't tune into the station because then nobody tell you to watch. There are certain conversations that Mary had that I am saving them for when the real law come that they can give it because of all the conversations I take with me and Mary, if I hand the tape them, these people would still be lying and I wouldn't know the truth. I had no choice and I let her know I was taping her because black and white don't lie. If I was lying, don't y'all wonder why Steve ain't Texas? You're not finna sue me in a state that I know you could turn around and try to lock me up and throw away a key with a crooked judge. He should have sued me in the state that I lived in at the time, which is California. And I already had a lawsuit. So when I had that lawsuit going on to California, March 18, 2018, Steve turned around after that, and that's when they tried to gag me. When they found out I took that lawsuit, March 8th, 2018, when they found out I took that lawsuit against him, that's when he started trying to gag me. He tried earlier in 2017, but that was Mary case, and I had no jurisdiction there. And I have a letter where I wrote the judge to say, Trick, you got me messed up. I'm not going to play those games with you. You, Angela Tucker, Steve Harvey, Ricky Anderson, Bobby Edmond, you will not blackmail me and make me be silent because of crimes you committed. So before any paperwork was ever taken out on me, Judge Angela Tucker, Bobby Edmond, Ricky Anderson, they all had complaints filed against them. I didn't do Ricky, but I did... Um, contact some people about things he had did through the court to allow them to know that a formal complaint I filed on Bobby at the time because she was the one who wrote all that disrespectful stuff about me and said I was a co-conspiracy and extortionist and Ms. Dan you have to realize extortionist and a co-conspirator can get you 20 years in prison 10 to 20 years they said i was that where is the evidence that would be just like they're saying you something we can get all the love we want in god but there are people that's gonna lie and try to put you in jail do you know how many people i fight for every day because they're in jail right now for crimes they didn't commit i'm fighting for a 30 year old young man right now in virginia in prison been there for four years just sitting the judge ain't seen him because of a lie a female told because she didn't she got mad because he didn't want to pay her bills i didn't want to take that chance and let them put me in jail and again miss dan if steve harvey was to reach out to me and they tell me there's no warrant on me i probably wouldn't say nothing else what what the fuck else would it be to say but you think you're going to sit up and have a warrant on me and i won't talk about you and you have to realize this internet, whatever y'all want to talk about, we can talk about. Every single day, Ms. Dan, when I wake up, I'm helping someone. Every time I go to sleep, I am on the phone 24-7 helping people. You know what I'm saying? A black woman trying to get flunked out of college because a teacher got an attitude because she don't like her little simple stuff. So I deal with a lot of people, and I deal with a lot of issues. You guys just don't see them in front. But that's why I said I wanted to bring my platform so like the young lady who was talking to me earlier, we're learning from all these kind of things. And for you to be as articulate as you are, you ask some very good questions. And you you got a piece about yourself. Continue to keep that peace and that spirit because you're seeing what everybody else is seeing. And at the end of the day, Ms. Dan, if Steve Harvey wanted to, he could shut this down. All they got to do is not have a warrant for my arrest because they know I didn't do nothing. But since you got the warrant for my arrest, like, I feel like I should just put some paperwork out there because they all the, they pulled my whole site down. So anything that was out there that was supposed to be sealed documents, it's not up there. But there are sites right now that's affiliated with Steve Harvey that are putting these sealed documents out. The only persons who could have got those sealed documents would have been someone in Steve Harvey camp. Because if you have sealed documents, no one can get those documents but the people that are affiliated with the case. So this could be shut down. But Steve Harvey would try to have to do it. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think he's too prideful. I don't think he's mad enough to shut it down. I think he likes this kind of drama because he likes to win. Right. And so are they saying that you're speaking of things that are in the sealed documents? Is that what they're saying? I, I'm going to be honest with you. They said I put the sealed documents out. So they flagged my whole page and took it down. 
So if all the pages sit down, why is there a warrant for my arrest? If I can speak on it and I know it's fraud, I'm going to say what I want to say the way I want to say it because it's fraud. And as an activist, you're not going to make me shut up because you don't like that I'm telling that's a crime being committed. But Ms. Dan, when we get off here too, I want you to go and just pull it for yourself. Pull up smoking guns, Steve Harvey, divorce con job. Everything I'm telling you, him and Ricky, the crimes they committed, it's in those documents. It's on my page, too. The crimes they committed. I'm trying to figure out how did they even get away with those crimes. They shouldn't have been able to get away with them. So if I speak about it, I told the truth. If I'm lying, then sue me. And until I know there is no warrant on me, then I'm going to continue to speak. The other night, Steve, like you can play this game so they'll turn around and make different accounts to talk to you because you know he ain't going to do it to Steve Harvey because he don't want to tell them himself. He told me if I shut up and go away and I be quiet, I can get freedom. Well, tell me how does that work? He said that don't worry about the people that's making videos about me. He got them. Don't say nothing to them. Don't worry about that. I said, what about Bobby and Ricky? He said, I got them too. I just need you to be quiet and I need you to do what I tell you to do. First of all, you're not going to tell me anything. Second of all, I got to shut up and get my freedom. Third of all, why, why is the warrant even on me? So what he does, he made different accounts to try to talk to me instead of being a real man. And Steve Harvey said, look, I want to shut this down. This is over with. Mary's here, you're here, and the warrant's gone. I don't really care what they do about Mary anymore. I love Mary. If anybody ever mess with Mary, I'm always going to be there. That's the instinct of an activist. But to know that you want to keep continuing to blackmail me about something that you know there are crimes involved, then I will continue to talk because when you read the smoke and gun, you're going to see crimes that they committed. Margie knew, all of them knew, and they still kept committed. So I'm not going to shut up and then turn around when y'all sleep. They come put me in jail because of lies they told and there's no proof out there. So if I put that blackmail letter out there and I'm going to make sure it goes viral, circulated enough, and I'm going to go on storm page to do it, I'm at least let y'all know the type of blackmail that Steve Harvey will do in order to keep his legacy. And as a black woman, it was very degrading, Dan, when y'all see that letter and you read it, what he wanted Mary to sign to silence her and to shut up about her baby getting beaten. I don't know no black woman who's going to do that. And Mary didn't do it either. And when I saw it, I feel like I was more insulted about that. And I'm really not even upset about it. I'm upset the way they handled everything because you're right. This shit right here, it should not be going on, Dan. I have too many other things in my circle that's going on that I got to keep dealing with Steve. But then how do I help queens like you if this man is jeopardizing my freedom? I have a family member in Texas myself, so I can't go to Texas and kick it with somebody because I got a warrant for my arrest. My face don't never change. And if anybody see me, it's what it is. So I have to worry about that. I don't want to be an activist because I'm fighting for people like you and me and i gotta worry about my freedom that's why i'm still here and if i don't do it now i will end up just like Corlanda harris who was a transgender woman who he paid somebody to beat her ass in jail let's go it said it and they beat her up in jail on the orders of steve harvey why because she bruised his ego so how many more women am i gonna let him do that to see it ain't just me it's been done to I'm just the only one that has really been vocal about it and kept on it about it. So did Steve put the um, warrant on you or did the judge? The judge did it because of Steve. Okay, got you. So I want you, right, judge, I get what you're saying. I want you to know, though, the Lord said right, vengeance right, is Steve, mine. So at the end of the day, Steve said we were trying to make him look bad. So they were able to go in and say, Judge, Mary making us look bad. Can we speak to the media? But we're going to shut Mary up. How is that fair that you can open a case, talk shit about it, shut it back up, and you silence Mary? Judge Andrew Tucker put the, the case, I mean, the warrant against me. But at the end of the day, 
she really can't tell me why. And so you putting a warrant against me because I know the, the court case was fraud. I know that your divorce is fraud and you're going to put a warrant against me so I can keep talking until somebody come arrest me. You're not going to do me like that. I'm that soldier. And all I'm saying is if to get right, you got to do right. There was a complaint on the judge before she would put a warrant out on me. There was a complaint on her in 2017 when they started trying to blackmail me about Mary case. And I basically sent them a letter saying, I'm not coming. You will not blackmail me. You will not discredit me. I gave her a whole letter. I can put that letter out. So there should never be something coming to me. And this should not be a warrant for my arrest because I didn't walk into Texas. Whatever crime I committed, whatever I did, and on the internet, it was in the state of California. So sue me there. Do not sue me in a state that you know a judge will go and try to get me beat up or stomped out like they did this transgender girl. I'm not going to do that, Miss Dan. So Angela Tucker put the warrant against me. But Steve Harvey got to say, you know what? Me and Essie came to a consent a, a agreement. We done signed. We boom, boom, boom. And we ain't got to worry about this no more. He don't want to do that. Right. And I just want to tell you, the Lord sees everything. He sees everyone. He know how everybody lives. And it don't matter what part of this world that you are uh, uh, that you are of. He sees everything. He also said, vengeance is mine. Meaning, to steadfast in his word and peace be still. So when it comes to that, we have to steadfast, meaning stand firm in his word and know that he will be there. He, Like I said, he sees everything. So he sees what's going on in the situation. You, he, When he said vengeance is his, he means let him be the author of your life and take care of your problems, your issues, your worries, your struggles. Not you, him. Yes, ma'am. He can handle it better than any one of us in this world can. He can handle any situation that we have better than we can. He has seen it all before Christ, after Christ. He has seen it all. He created the world. So he know what is of the world. But he told us to not be of the world. He told us to be set apart. So we are supposed to be set apart. No matter where we see these flashy people with, no matter where we see all these people with this money with, it does not matter because our riches are stored in heaven where no moth, no gnats, no nothing can get to it and it can't grow mold. It is forever pure. Well, you just say, how old are you, baby? Um, I'm 25. Y'all, y'all, do y'all, do, 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 do y'all hear this 25-year-old sister, you hear me? Sister, you're powerful. And I needed that message today. Um, and I thank you because I don't know how long you've been watching and this is going on. Um, I can truly say everything you said 100% is true. I will take everything you said in consideration too. I want to let you know the only reason why this is still going on is because of the warrant. But it doesn't stop what I have to do as far as fighting for people every day. But your advice and what you just said, as a young woman, I am never too old to learn graciously and humbly. I thank you for coming on this platform, just sharing your young spiritual knowledge with me, sister. And anytime you need anything, I'm just a phone call away. I will answer my phone. And if I need to do anything for you, if you need to ask me something, please, you know, please call me. And please share your presence with me again because you're, you're both very enlightening and you're very um, graceful and you have that spirit of God. I ain't even got to see you. I know you got a light. Yes, ma'am. And we all got to shine our light bright. We are brothers and sisters. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight up against principalities and evil spirits. It, it, because the prince of this air is Satan. So in order for us to get to heaven, we have to abide by what the Lord wants us to so we can be in his good grace, so we can see his face because no sin will be able to be in his presence. He is too holy. So you keep your head up. You keep yourself up, Miss Essie. You know, it's a lot of negativity that's going on in the world and I think we should all focus on more of the positivity because we are right now in this very moment living in the last days and a lot of things are hiding you know this in plain sight for us to see so if you open that bible up i'm gonna send you a verse to look at but okay. when you open that bible up and you read it you can read one scripture and get 10 different lessons from it i'm telling you that's how powerful the lord's word is and it will always stand in in, in this life so these are the lessons that he's teaching us when he gives us these parables and these stories in the bible um so you know before we leave this world so we can be like christ so i just 
want you to know that you know you have people in your corner and you have people who want to who 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 want to see you do great and, and and do better and it's just you you got to block that negativity today because they're satan let me tell you something my granny used to tell me and it's an old country thing she said if you let the devil ride he gonna want to drive and what does the devil do kill steal and destroy do you want him driving you around in life no ma'am do you want him riding with you in life telling you stuff in your ear no ma'am you let the lord be the head of your life because satan is a liar you tell him to get beneath you and get out your house get out your your mind just tell him to move and by jesus christ's name he gotta do it he gotta flee amen you know what sister it is women like you that know that make me know that i'm still standing for the right boundary and if it hadn't been for my subscriber the one you just seen earlier want to want me to come up with these this question that would never be nothing else i probably wouldn't even brought this up but i like to put stuff up front of people you know what i'm saying and really how i've grown compared to the steve harvey thing i will continue to grow until you know i get justice but remember one thing when i, I muted you Mr. So i can hear your background um remember one thing when i fight i fight for just not for me i'm doing this with sisters like you and anybody else who don't went through this or being violated know your stand know your truth you know what i'm saying stand what god wants you to do and that's all i can do and yeah baby i'm gonna fall i'll make mistakes and decisions but then the sisters like you that come back on this platform that put me back in perspective and for that miss dan i really thank you and i really enjoyed your presence today and i hope that you will join us again for sure as you have been humbly enlightening for me yes ma'am i will remember perfect don't get into heaven the forgiving do amen so we, we 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 gotta we gotta follow through with what the lord wants us to do in this life everybody has different journeys within this life and a lot of things that people can learn from we're supposed to learn from the elder women that is also in the bible as well we're supposed to be taught things and it doesn't matter what age you are it is great to be taught a lot of things but i'm gonna let you go i'm gonna let you um go on and continue with the um channel right now but i just want you to know i'm keeping you in my prayers and um you know i just hope that the holy spirit just touch you and, and, and that you can find your way back you know and away from steve harvey because he is old and tired so you know you just gotta let it go and right. i'm not saying that to be mean or anything about steve but you know when judgment day comes we all have to stand before the lord for what we did in the body that he that he gave us when we came out of our mothers so what he in, in the things that he did to people you know he did things to people as well but because steve did it he has to go before the lord for what he did on judgment day so i love everybody on this channel um i didn't want to come with any negativity because that's overbearing a lot but i just wanted to ask those questions and i hope everyone has a lovely night and that they're blessed because like i said we are living in the last days and the lord said he wished none would perish but because satan out here running the muck and people don't want to believe in him you know some stories that's just how it goes but y'all be blessed y'all have a great night and i'm gonna continue to listen Thank you. That's what Southern people do. I knew she was from the South, coming with all that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Where you from, boo? Where you from? All right, all right, boo. Where you from? Oh, I'm from uh uh, uh I'm from Arkansas. All right, Arkansas. Uh -huh. yes. I'm from a good. Uh, I'm from Augusta, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on, baby. You are so mm -hmm. nice. Join me again and write me in Essie Berry. 54 at gmail.com. 54? Yes, ma'am. At gmail.com. Yes, baby. Put your number. Uh, yes, I will. Yes, ma'am. It's Arkansas because I got some stuff going on down there with some farmers right now. So that's coincidental that you call me. I got two cases down there. So that's a good thing. Arkansas catching up with me. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you, beautiful. Yeah. You're welcome, honey. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Y'all, did y'all see that knowledge that young sister came up here saying? Let me, Miss Carol, if you got your phone, your TV up in the background or whatever, cut it down before I put you on because it'd be echoing. Because when I was talking to you, I muted yourself. I heard your TV. So I'm going to mute you. But if you got some in the background talking, baby, uncut it down for me.
Now I can't unmute you, Miss Carrie. You got to unmute yourself. Okay, go. Hey, Miss Carol. <laughs> hey, hey, Miss Carol. Hey, Professor Ogilvy. Hi. What's up? Um, uh, that was beautiful. What she said. What? Everything she said. Everything yeah. she said. Uh, I'm late. I apologize. I skip right. over the situation, but anyway. Um, were y'all talking about sex? We were. I want to answer this. No, we weren't talking about sex. We were talking about a sex tape and some sexual oh, pictures. Oh. Um, that was well, 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 hold on. She said, I think sex trafficking, she said, I think sex trafficking is somebody owns you and uses exploitation, but a sex tape is something private. Right, it's true. But she also said something else. It, what's the difference between a sex tape and sexual trafficking? This one right here, let me see. Um, she said, what's the difference between a sex tape and human trafficking? Just curious. Um, to me, sex tape is like you just said, something private. Sexual traffic is means somebody getting paid to move me and have sex with different men. That ain't never happened to me. So it's a difference. And they do tape it. But sex trafficking, you moving females, getting paid, doping them up, the sexual have separate preferences with other men and just moving them around. That's why they call it traffic because they keep the traffic going and a study flow. Okay, Ms. Pierre, what's up with you? Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um. No, what's up? With the uh, sex tape, that's what um, I had to come in on. I have a friend, and um, she married this young man, and um, they broke up, and about, what, three, four years later, he tried to get back with her, and she refused to, and they had did a sex tape together, and mm -hmm. he went and put it out on the uh, Internet. Mm. and uh, someone called in on him. He got in trouble for it. So what I wanted to say on that was that just because you feel like, or whoever it is, feel like that they really love the guy, we're going to be together forever, anything could happen to yeah. a, a person to yeah. do evil stuff like that. They can get in trouble for doing it, but the fact is, your face is out there in a bad way. So, I mean, you have to be careful with allowing your body to be videotaped. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, now, I'll, if I got a relationship, um, you know, I, I probably wouldn't do that because you are right. Some people do do that sex porn. They get binge porn. They get upset when they get mad, and then they take the pitch video and go show it. So, like, things like that, you always... Like be concerned of, but I just didn't sleep around. I was married most of my life, so like I, I would know it would have to come from one of my husbands. You know what I'm saying? Because you, I watch everything when I'm around. Her. I had a lot of people that I was around, but it wasn't on a personal level. So you got to be aware of who you're around on a personal level, because you cannot say that nobody won't use something that you use against you for sure. Well, that is true. That is true. I heard you had some um videos out. Man, you could get paid. Um, I ain't seen the videos yet, baby. But if it's a video of me, baby, baby, <laughs> yes, baby, it's gonna be some fire behind that video, straight up. But I don't I don't think that's true. Um, like I said, if there is a video, um if there's a video about me, then I've never seen it. And I would like to, but there are there are new pictures of me though. There are some, and I'm not boob. I'm not. My whole body is not naked. Like I'm too shy for that. And I mean, I wasn't shy for those pictures, but my whole body is not showing. I think I got some kind of little gown on or something. I don't know. Whatever it is, it was cute and sexy. Because hey, um, the way men been. Uh latching on to it, trying to lack a, latch on to you like a magnet, your face can just be showing and then you're going to draw, they're going to be trying to market you, just your face. Oh, yes, she's so. a beautiful face. Let us just put her out there. But I don't even know if I want no magnets no more. I don't need no magnets. I don't think so. you drawing these men kind of the way. They are just so drawn to you. I think there's, what you say, that bubbly brown sugar, some stuff like that. Is that what it is? They draw to me. 
I don't know if I want them like that. <laughs> but <clears throat> as women, we really do have to be careful with our bodies and who we permit to, um, how we permit others to treat us and our bodies. And we because need to be that accountable. I just looked at, um, what's her name? Thought, what's it? Thought Voice of Maddie. I believe my mother sold me to the sex industry when I was 14 and I am 33 now. Crazy. Wow. I'm so sorry about that, baby. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say, y'all, we put our story out here. This baby was saying her mama sold her at 14 to the sex industry. Like, really? Wow. It's 14 and we be thinking we have problems. You know what? Um, beautiful thought. I'm glad that you shared that with us, Miss Maddie. You know what I'm saying? Because people won't, aren't courageous enough to say things like that. One reason what really made me come out with this as well today, because a young lady called me and she ain't been with her husband in decades and years. And she said that he keeps showing them. Now they got a 20 some year old son at this time. He took her when he was five, but the whole time she had to get a restraining order against them. And now it's like he want to cause drama and havoc in her life again. Now she ready to go and go into hiding and just change the numbers and phones and basically, she said that they had some pictures. So he told her if he showed, this is what really made me the icing on the cake. I mean, the camera broke the back or whatever they say. You know what I'm saying? It made me come out and just talk about the tape. Shy, she wanted to know some questions. But this particular lady said that the dude said, her ex-husband, he was going to shoot her. So you got to shoot her about some naked pictures or videos or whatever. But if she put the video out, he going to shoot her. But he's threatening to take the videos or the footage or whatever and send it to her job. So I told her what to do, and she's supposed to call me back tomorrow morning, right? But what I was looking at, y'all, is that she was just in that much fear to think that dude was going to take those pictures to her job. And this is her child's father. So, you know, like Miss Carol just said, they got something that you call revenge porn. Like people don't really care. Or Shy said that revenge porn, that people don't really care. But when you are in a sexual relationship with your husband, it don't seem like you should have to really worry about if somebody's going to show a naked video of you and you are with your husband. But I think on the video, I don't know if it was two men and her or was it two women and him, but I pretty much think it was two women and him. He won't want to go shoot her if she put the footage of the video out, but you want to go put footage of her out. So I'm just saying, I don't know how that goes. And I had told her something like that was going on about me today. And so I wanted to put it out there. So you got to own who you are. Like if something happens, because you don't never know what is going to come out and bite you in the background. But even though you don't know what's going to bite you in the background, you really just have to be careful what you do, married or not. Because <laughs> if you're married, so somebody's going to like blackmail you if they divorce you, if they get mad, if they want to use it. And see, things like what she just said, Miss Carol just said, and, and this girl earlier, it'll make you don't want to do that freaky with your mate or do anything like that with your mate because of the simple fact that you have to worry about are they going to use that some type of way against you. You should never have to be in something and... um you should never have to be in a relationship and you got to worry about if your man going to do some shicey stuff like that. So people should really, um, people should really kind of think about that before they do it. Now I know I would be in any type of relationship. You know what I'm saying? Now you give me one, I give you one that might be working a little bit, but other than that, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got to be mutual on this thing. You're going to blackmail me with all this bubbling and brown sugar. Now listen, <laughs> I don't know what somebody talking about, but they said they'll pay high dollar for my video. So straight up, give us a video about me. Send it to my email so homie can play the high dollar for it. But now, you know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to get backing up and rocking a little bit. What we doing? 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 You know what I'm saying? And you ain't going to get all the strip tease stuff, but I can make your, your mind wander a little bit if that's what it takes. But at any time you do something from past, present, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Don't be shamed of what you do. Um, I'm not shamed of the pictures. If they come out, they come out. 
they're beautiful pictures. I think, you know what I'm saying? Somebody else might say something else. But I just want people to know whatever you do in life, it's always maybe a repercussion to it. But you have to analyze yourself what you choose you want to do. Would I have thought these pictures would come back out 20 years later? Hell, I had never even saw the pictures, y'all, up until a couple of years ago myself. Not knowing those same pictures going to come back and surface again and again. If whatever reason these men are making these negative videos on me, y'all fascinated with me, ain't you? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fascinated over there. I get it. I get it. I can be any name that you want me to be on this screen, but when I'm off screen, I bet y'all calling me mommy. Uh-huh. Come on, mommy. Has to get out, mommy. Uh-huh. Yeah, come on. Stop it. I'm just saying, don't lie to yourself. Tell the truth. Be honest with yourself. Miss Carol said, I got them all. Be honest. Got them all. How? <laughs> yeah, you dominating the industry. I, I'm I'm just curious about this. Um, this is a little bit off subject, okay, but right. um it's concerning Mr. Harvey, Steve Harvey. Um I noticed. Uh, there are other platforms. In fact, there are a lot of other platforms that have the information that you're releasing out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not understanding. It seems like he's just coming after you. But, I don't understand that. But you said they're using the information that I released out, right? Yes. I released it out, right? Right. I release it out, right? I got, I have that. Okay. I mean, so, I mean since so he's he seeing it, I'm saying this, since he's seeing it from other platforms, why not go after, why he don't go after the other platforms? Because he's going to release it first. Oh, and they're feeding off of me. So if I shut up, everybody shuts up and we can all be free. So you the powerhouse. That's what they say. Yeah, you the powerhouse. That what they say? Yes. They don't, cut you off, the power's gone. Don't, 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 don't hate me, huh? <laughs> don't hate me, no. What you say now? They I say they shut you off, the power's gone. Well, I'm the power gone because I'm going to be on this internet. They can take No, 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 no. I'm saying concerning that situation only. Well, I feel like um, if I stop talking, they won't have anything to talk about. I give them something to talk about. You actually said what I just said. Thank right. you. I gave some right. So basically, I mean, I'm I'm there. I'm there. I'm their fire to their match. I'm their strike to their light. I'm their stroke to their ego. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, I got you. I got you. You know, get it all out, man. Get all that frustration out. You. You couldn't get it with your mother or your girlfriends or your grandma. Get it out with Essie Berry. Come on. Do your best. Please. Mm -hmm. um, you have a very good platform, and I congratulate you for that. I reverted, I mean, I reflected back on when I first began to listen to you, yes, and then I thought about it today, I say, wow, she's doing a fantastic job. It's like, it's a new host on your show. Yeah, I, I came on because I want my sex tape. <laughs> I watch it myself. I need to see it. And I just want people to know, can nobody tell your truth better than you? That's true. How I handle it, maybe I didn't handle it right. I'm not asking nobody to take nothing off me no more. It's going to be what it's going to be. You don't like what I said? Go call the judge and tell her what I said. What's she going to do? At this yeah. time, I stand for what I believe in. Talk about me. I'm going to talk about you. And I don't really have to talk about you because if you're really a non-factor, then it's okay. But if someone feels some kind of way on my platform and you want to address it, I want to address it too. That's what the biggest thing is. I had a good time today talking about the sexual encounters of me with me being a little nasty at the time with my um, dirty video. I mean, my dirty footage of my pictures or whatever. And it's getting, if y'all get the pictures, they put them out. I know my people be watching the videos. Y'all go call and tell me, 
But what I want to tell people to do is, go ahead. How long have they supposed to have been out? Um, I know they've been out since 2012, beginning of 2013. Boy, you're a bad chick, man. They still you're a bad chick. chick. How? For that long, and then they want to surface them. That means that if you wasn't uh, that bad, they just put you aside and gone about their business. Amen. But you hold on to valuable stuff. Yeah, but they know they get pictures gonna put them out. You know what I'm saying? Why you gotta repeat what I say? Put put all this bubbling brown sugar out here. <laughs> Put it all out there. Put it all out there so everybody, and that's the last pick y'all to get up. Put it out for the world to see these brothers end up born again, too. Put it out there. Y'all go on, put it out there. Make my day as what is his name? Clint Eastwood say, Make my day. Put it out there. I'm happy about it. See, what you think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be upset. I really ain't upset. I mean, I think it's a good thing. I think if you can wake up every morning and think about talking about me on a negative level, it's a great thing. Yes, definitely. I think if you want to put the naked pictures out about me, I think it's a great thing. Yeah. I think if you don't sure. like me, I think it's a great thing. Yeah. I think if you lie on me, I think it's a great thing. I think when you do whatever you want to do, it's a great thing. But no, you will never walk up in my face and do half of the stuff that you're doing on this internet. So I just want to put that out there. I really want to thank the young lady that came up this morning. I mean, a few minutes ago. Right. And she was highly intelligent, very articulate. And what she th said about the word of God is true. That was a 25-year-old sister up here on my platform. And that could have been a baby to any of us because my babies are 36 and 38. So I just feel like that's just another little queen that I'm going to wrap it to my arms. People know real from not negativity. And that just let me know, Essie, you're still going on in the right direction. Right. Questions that Shy said today. I remember when Shy was so shy, and now she's asking questions to make a person think one way or another. At the end of the day, the world is coming to an end, and we have to focus on bigger things. Like my world right now is so like overwhelming, you guys. Like I wake up with a smile. I go to bed with a smile. I just thank God humbly just for how my heart is opening up and how I feel like in my spirit and in my mind, and in my soul, like it's something different going on. You guys, when I know about it, know what's happening. I'm going to let you know too, for whatever reason, God say, I woke up. He said, I got you. He said, don't trip. Don't worry. These people want to be you. Men want you and the women want to be you. And when you turn away from the men, that's what they're going to do. They're going to talk about you because, I don't want you or that I didn't want to be bothered with you. I apologize about that. You just went in my rank or my caliber, like Miss Jackie said. So I have to know now that there's something so much more powerful going on. There is something so much more spiritual going on. There is something so much more godly going on that really I could care less what anybody say at this point. What I know is what I live by. What I know is by what I walk by. And my heart ain't feeling this way for no reason. My spirit ain't feeling this way for no reason. How I walk now and I'm walking my faith, that was nothing but the mere fact of God. And you know what? What it made me know is Anybody can cross you. I'm glad Miss Carol's here, just like I talked to Miss Carol. Anybody else that I gave a chance to, any older ladies, I give you a chance. I give young people, I give anybody a chance. But when I see you a liar and you want to come sideways, I can't really rock with you no more. I would rather have 15 good people, five, three, two, one, than have a bunch of liars and some fake people on my team. That's not what this circle was about. And I think we're going to show that. And Miss um dan today she really just let us know that our platform is reaching a whole nother elevation and it's a miracle it's surprising that she called from um arkansas because i got her and then it's a gentleman that's going through some stuff with some farming stuff and an older gentleman who told me that you know how men are when they come at me like that, how raw I could be. Because men who come at women and try to disrespect them and degrade them, 
They're homemade bitch ass niggas. So you got made at home with that. Then you want to bring it to the streets and act like you're something more than you are. And any man that disrespect a woman, that's what they are. And you really are lacking something within yourself. That's why whether you're private part or whatever, that's why people act like they do or they come because all you got is your mouth. You ain't got nothing else going for yourself. And if anybody doing any footage on me, they doing on me to get likes, shares, clicks, and views. And do that because I can make you my hoe at any time. Um, with Steve Harvey, the only reason why I continue, because there's a warrant for my arrest. If someone comes to me on any level and Steve Harvey will be ready to make a difference and shut it down, fine. But what you won't do this year to put a crime on me and I didn't commit a crime, then I can just put the paperwork back out there that I have. And at the end of the day, no matter what I have, it's all fraud upon the courts. So you can't arrest me without getting arrested yourself. So y'all can do y'all damage. But 100% beyond a shadow of doubt, I am going to put that blackmail letter out there that Bobby Edmund wrote to marry the sign on behalf of Steve, blackmailing her, trying to say that he was not a woman beater and he was not a child abuser. You cannot put something like that in a letter with me. I just analyze every word, even when I'm in a relationship, like people may not like it, but I analyze when what word you say, how you say it, if it's a particular way you said it, and maybe that's the activist in me. And if I ever see someone writing a letter saying, I am writing this a free will, you're not writing this a free will. You said, I am writing this a free will, a sound mind. If you were writing it a free will, you could just say, I'm writing this a sound mind. But you couldn't tell me you're writing something a sound mind, and I know you've been in a mental war. That wasn't going to happen. And before I before I even read that letter, Mary had already told me certain things she had went through. So to go back and read a letter saying, I'm writing this a sound mind, a free will, when I got to the child abuse part, and said, it is called his name, what's his name? It said, I want to say that Steve Harvey is not a woman beater. Now, if he wasn't a woman beater, why that shit would be in a letter? If he wasn't a child abuser, why would that be in a letter? That right there stopped. And right when I read that right there and I stopped, then I wanted to find a police report. And that's how all this trickled out of control. Because they showed me one thing. And then I want to see the rest for myself because it was bigger. And I think some of it happened because I was abused. And that's what made me move the way I moved. So I just want to tell you guys, live in your truth. Don't let nobody sit up here and do anything to you. And from here on out, yeah, I'm still going to release the stuff by Steve Harvey. Always, always. Until that warrants off me, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do it how I want to do. There is some things going on behind closed doors. I don't want to spill it right now. But when people sit up on the internet, they talk and they think they get you. They already got behind closed doors. That's what God showed me. That was, That is what's the truth. So I really can't get into how someone feels about me. I can think about how God created me to be and just the joy and the peace and the happiness that I feel in my spirit and my heart right now. And I can just smile with gracious is knowing that God is carrying me through. And my main thing now is to love people who love me and to deal with people who deal with me. I really got to have to take it a little bit precautious because this old lady who lied and said that I didn't support her, your husband so support you. I was trying to be there for you, but it just makes me don't want to deal with people, but I can't close my heart off because that's not who I am. So I just want to tell you guys, like, I enjoyed this conversation today. Um, and thank you, Miss Carol, for coming up and let me know what you feel and sharing that with us. I, I even asked Miss Kay about and she I want to tell her story. So and we don't tell it today. We'll tell it on recap Friday. Um, I did put a video out about Diddy because somebody sent me a list. So I just put the people in the party on the list. But they were saying a lot of the people, especially the men who had went to Diddy's party, they knew about the trafficking and the sex rings and a whole lot of other stuff, and nobody ever said anything. At the end of the day, this was going on for a long time before they got Diddy right now, all the way up to when Wendy Williams first was talking about it. And now look how we are, and now they finna get this boy. He didn't settle that $30 million because he was telling the truth. He settled that $30 million because he knew he was innocent, and he did what he did to Cassie. Now the chickens have came home to roost, and he finna be held accountable for his actions. And what, it, what happens, you guys, God showed me. It doesn't matter. Steve already been held accountable. Like you said, they're making videos about him every day. And every day my face is in probably one or two of them videos. And that's fine too. And so they feel like that I started all this. 
it was one video said that it seemed like Essie spearheaded and coming after Steve Harvey and it's spearheaded for everybody else to speak up about celebrities. If that's what it is, then so be it. And I thank God that it happened because Steve Harvey is no more credible than anybody else. You can pay somebody, but you still can't change the truth. And that's what people got to realize. And I come on this platform because I want people to be strong. I want people to be able to stand. I want people to be focused. And I also want people to see how I fight. And you could be the same way and emerging and learning. You know what I'm saying? Because if I don't stand for my people, who's going to stand, especially women, who's going to stand for you? So God does everything for a reason, you guys. And I'm here to share whatever I can. I want y'all to share with me. I want to tell the men Sunday that the people, a lot of people wrote me and saying they really enjoyed Sunday. Miss BB, I thank you for your comments as well because it was um, it was very enlightening to know that so many people liked it, what we did. And I'm going to call it like a spiritual gathering because I don't want to say like we got no hypocrites or we trying to play something. We are all sharing our knowledge of God. But before we get off this platform, because Shai forgot to ask me this, but I remember because I said, Shai, I don't want to do this two times. I only want to do this once. And if somebody want to know something after this, then I'll let you know. If the if the if the the pictures come back up again, if I find them, I'll put the pictures out myself. But there was a poem that was released Sunday when the men were doing their scriptures and stuff like that. I'm gonna go back and I want to listen let y'all listen to the poem and then I'm gonna explain what it meant because some people are idiots and they really don't comprehend. Stuff, so you have to go back across the board with idiots because they don't comprehend. I really need you to listen to what this video is finna say because it's actually talking about God and it's saying if you cannot love God and get prepared to love God, don't be anxious. Don't look around because when you're ready, I will prepare you a love more far than you can be ever even imagine. But how can you love God without loving yourself? And how can you love yourself? If you don't love yourself, how can you prepare to get a perfect love for you? So the actual point was saying that it was God who was allowing you to know that I am making you, I am creating you, I am building you for that perfect love that I have projected and getting ready to give you, but you have to be ready yourself. But someone went and said it was some sideways. I don't know. I didn't hear the comment because stupid is what stupid does. Ignorant is what ignorant does. And I don't have time for that. So I didn't listen to what the video said or someone put out something negative because that shows jealousy. I like what people be jealous of me. And men, to me, any men who sit up there dogging me and trying to come at me, I think they got sissy intentions. I would rather just tell you, just go and tell me you're a sissy. I would rather just go and tell me you're gay than have you say so you're a man, but you got sissy mentality or gay mentality. And I love gay people, but own what you are. So let me put this out here so y'all can hear it. And then you guys, y'all can tell me what you think. You know, but that's what this is saying. But only an idiot who don't know God wouldn't. Please tune in and listen to the verbiage of this video. I can tell you what it says. You, I'm going to mute you. Mute you. Hold on. Till it's done. When I woke up this morning, God allowed me to know he is preparing a perfect love for me. Everyone longs to give themselves completely to someone, to have a deep soul relationship with one another, to be loved thoroughly and exclusively. But God to the Christians say no, not until you're satisfied and fulfilled and content with living, loved by me alone and giving yourself totally and unreservedly to me, to have intensely a personal and unique relationships with me alone. I love you, my child, and until you discover that in me is your satisfaction to be found, you will not be capable of the perfect human relationship that I have planned for you. You will never be united with another until you are united with me exclusive of anyone and anything else, exclusive of any other desires and longings. I want you to stop planning, stop wishing, and allow me to bring it to you. You just keep watching me, expecting the greatest things. Keep learning and listening to the things I tell you, you must wait. Don't be anxious and don't worry. Don't look around at the thing you think you want. Just look to me or you'll miss what I have to show you. And then when you are ready, I'll surprise you with a love far more wonderful than you would ever dream. 
You see, until you are ready and until the one I have for you is ready at the same time. And until you are both satisfied exclusively with me and the life, for he prepared for you, you won't be able to exercise the love that exemplifies your relationship with me, and this perfect love my child, I want you to have a wonderful love, I want you to see the picture of your relationship with me, and enjoy materially and concretely the everlasting union of beauty and perfection and love that I offered you with myself. Know that I love you. And I am God Almighty. Believe and be satisfied, and wait and see that I have prepared you a perfect love in the image of me. Now I know that God has my perfect love being prepared for me. Thank you, God. Have a blessed day. Now, at the end, I said that part because if you listen to the video and it resonates with you, it said that I am God Almighty. I just put it in a female form. So, like... People look at these um, oh, AIs and then y'all be talking to AIs like they real damn human. You ain't got nothing else to do, but okay. At the end, listen to the message that was given. It's basically saying if you cannot love God within yourself, why would God give you someone to love and you can't even love yourself? If you can't love yourself and have that same godly love and love God first, putting his divine love first in the caliber that you should love him to love yourself. Then when you love yourself and you got that divine great love within God, then God's going to give you that perfect love that you can even ever imagine. So don't look around. Don't be anxious when you're ready. I will give you a love more far greater than you can ever even imagine. That's what that was saying. So what would you say, Miss Carol? You're good. I said I'm muted. Am I? Can you can hear me? Though? Okay. Yeah. I was I was thinking it said that God created someone for each one of us, but He want us to allow Him to prepare us for that person, for us not to just go after them because you're not ready yourself to get someone else. He already had them, but he have to prepare you and them for each other. Right. And what people got to realize, I even realize in my relationship, like I have been married, but I don't like up until Fred, I don't feel like I asked God, you know, for uh, my relationship. I was forced into that. My first marriage, my second marriage, because I didn't really know about love. Rerun passed away and then here come the, uh, Fred. But each one of those men were different. But like when Fred, my bodyguard, walked up on me, I knew to trust him. How I knew God prepared a rerun for me is look at how his dates he passed away. I married him October the 22nd on my birthday. He died October the 21st, 2003. How you can't tell me that God didn't have that order. I hate that he died within that time frame, but that's a powerful time to me to let me know that God's speaking to me to say, I gave this man to you to make sure that you walk right accordingly because I knew the rest of the wives wouldn't. So what I did, I took him away at this time to make sure that you remember how I brought him in your presence. October the 21st, um, 2003 is when he died and he entered my life. October the 22nd, is when we got married and on my birthday. So to me, that was a powerful sign from God to allow me to know I gave you his legacy, so do right by it. That's what God did. So I have to say that, you guys, God prepares divine loves for reasons. You know what I'm saying? I can truly say when I was going through something with my whole life situation, when Rerun showed up, at that time, he was supposed to show up. Right cross when that time he was supposed to show up. My first two, ah, uh, because I was young and I didn't know, but I still loved them at that time. But then I got to really realize, and every woman should realize it too. If you did not ask God for a man or that perfect man or that perfect love for you, then it's not going to be what you want to be because you ain't got God in there with you too. In order to have a perfect divine love, they have to have the spirituality of God and to have to dwell within them. Because other than that, you'll be wasting your time looking for something that you want to be there that is not there. So don't be anxious. Don't look around. Don't rush. Don't think. Wait till God prepares that perfect love that he feels is ready for you and you are ready for them. 
that is what that whole poem was about, period. It said, seek me first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that's included in these things and be anxious for nothing. Correct. So sometimes people can read things and they will misinterpret what is read or sometimes people will read things and they're going to take it in the way in the way that they want to take it. You can say stuff in the way that you want to take it, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. I try to be straightforward and to the punch. I saw right cross. I want to address something because I saw right cross up there. When someone said that I had sent somebody a, a, a no, somebody sent me. I asked them for a ding a ling pick. I, I, I've been married so many times. Why would I really do that? But then I said, if I was going to ask somebody, if I would have did that, why well, wouldn't holler that Raymond or right cross or somebody on my block, right? And I saw what right cross said, something about Raymond or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He said something. Not Raymond, whatever. I would ask for it. I could ask for right cross too. I could ask for Raymond. I could ask for anybody. That's not something that I do. But I'm just saying, Raymond was already saying he was a little sweet on me. So why would I ask for this dude? And I wouldn't ask Raymond. That's what I'm saying. When people say things, you got to realize what people say and will it be true or not? Just like people saying that I'm trying to come on to women. I'm 54. I've never came on to any woman. And it's some bad sisters be on my platform. It's bad sisters in the world. That's just not me. So you got to realize when people say things, we leave half of what you hear and none of what you see because there's always two sides to a story. You got to decide which side you're going to take and which side you want to be. And I'm saying even with that, there are men sending me their private parts every day, all day on Facebook. I don't get on Facebook and look at them men private parts. I can't take them with me. What I'm going to do with that? It's just a, a piece of uh, dingling with a, in a picture, you guys. So I'm just saying, like, we as women, we got to think more highly and value on ourselves, no matter what somebody think, feel, or say, or whatever somebody feel like they want to say about you, what you want to do. Because at the end of the day, at least I'm truthful with myself. I'm not going to just go ask a stranger someone I'm not comfortable with for something. I would rather ask someone that I am. But that's something I never did. But if I'm married, I'm in a relationship, or I want to be kinky with my man, yeah, I'll do it with my man because I'll send him something and he can send me something back. But other than that, no, nah, I'm not going to do none of that. That ain't that ain't what it is. That ain't what it is at all. I can't do that at all. So I want to say that to you guys. Um, and I hope that I wasn't too um, vulgar. But I just want to put that out there because I really don't want to have this conversation again. My actions speak who I am. My actions tell you what kind of woman I am. And at any time... Um, they want to get the video or whatever. If it's one, please send it to me. And if anybody want to pay for a lie detector test, I'll take it. I'll do it on Storm. But you can pay for it and I'll take the test. I'm not going to pay for no test and I know I'm telling the truth. But anything that I've said all the way up until anything I've said from Steve to people who was on my platform that I left alone, any of that, I will take a lie detector test about it if you want to pay for it. But people ain't willing to get that kind of truth involved. So I just want to say that. That was a beautiful poem. And it was a good reminder of if you want the true person for you, that's what you need. That's the procedure you should follow. Well, I am, because I, I don't know why this is so important to some people, because I'm not dating, but people are talking all up under my clothes and all that. So I could, I could come on this platform and tell a person what I want in a man. I don't have to hesitate. I can let you know everything I want in him and how he walk, everything. I will let you know. So if that's so important to people, that's a video that I will be doing as well. You know what I'm saying? And then, too, you guys, knowledge is power. God is everlasting. We have to focus on what we need to do right now to keep our mind in a peaceful surrounding. I do know that there's a lot of people watching me right now, and I am thankful for that. But you guys, I just, I'm just human. I just like to come on here and have fun and do what you guys do and laugh and do our little stuff. Other than that, all the rest of the stuff, it's not even matter to me. You have a very uh, family oriented place. Form. And it, I think it speaks volumes of you, the kind of person you 
are very open hearted and very family oriented and people uh, can gravitate to your platform very easily because you are a friendly, very warm, sweet sometimes, sweet sour. Did she say sweet? Y'all saw she slipped that in, sweet sometimes, that's a person. No, you didn't. Um, I gave you a compliment. I gave you a compliment. You said sometimes, but I heard you, you, I heard you slip that in. Um, Miss Thought, the voice of Maddie. I've seen you on here the other day, Miss Batty, and I've seen you today, and I love your compliments, and I love that you join us. I thank you for being a part of my circle. If there's anything I can do for you at any time, you're so welcome that you can contact me at any time. Y'all got the number up there so y'all can see, but I just want to let her welcome. And thank you to all my platform, all my moderators for welcoming these people, you know, into the box and let them know that they are valued. And, you know, I like how y'all are so humble to them. When I get through, I'm going to put, I got to make sure now so they done told that lie on D-Ham. And I got to make my man D-Ham a, a, a moderator. We got to get him with one of the wrenches some kind of way. That's just their power. Then she have power. Um, Dirty Dan, we love you. You got that power, girl. Thank you. And Miss Carol, thank you too. I really appreciate it. And I'm so glad that you're doing good. Tomorrow we got Therapy Thursday. I'm not sure what we got to talk about. I'm going to call the therapist and get it ready. Um, let's find out from there. And then if anybody has something that they want to say on Thursday, say, for instance, if Miss Carol want to come up here and she write me a week before, we can keep the show about her because this is an easy way to get therapy was certified. You know what I'm saying? But she's coming up here giving her knowledge. So I really want you guys to love her and pay attention. And then Friday, y'all know we're going to do recap. Recap going to be off the chain. John said something about coming on Saturday. I'm not sure about that. I know all the brothers going to be back on the platform um, Sunday doing their thing again. And one of these Sundays, I'm going to have to come up and get my message and get my word together, too. So um, what do they say? Reverend Fry lost his position. No, Reverend Fry, you lost your position. What are you talking about? Reverend Fry's supposed to be... Um, Reverend Fry's supposed to be doing Easter Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Come on, Reverend Fry, unless you're going to be sleep on me, let me know. Let me get everybody video, I mean, everybody message in before I go. Miss Carol, they just showing you love. We're so happy that you're better. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Wasn't that powerful? She was 25 years old. Didn't that girl get some wisdom? She yes, just made it yes. Good. Yeah, we, we was way back there on that sex part, but okay, you got the miles looking. Okay. I dealt with some scary bullshit involving police and human trafficking. Wow, it's been some crazy years of mine. Um, like I'm gonna be honest with you, money talk, bull walk. It's a lot of police officers that know this stuff is ha happening and they don't say anything. If there's anything thought that I can do to help you, if you need me to assist you in some kind of way, I think I just showed my number up there. Then I can I see, let me see how I do it. 747-248-6433. Again, 747-248-6433. Hey Tony. And um, my email is essieberry at gmail, no, essieberry54 at gmail.com. So if you were to need to contact me any kind of way, if I can help you, I can for sure. Oh, D nice, D nice, D nice. You gonna talk, talk to them about taking the warrant? What you gonna do, D nice? Why are you over here? D nice play both sides of the fence. She ain't D nice, she's nosy nice. I believe my. <laughs> So man, sex energy went okay. I think I went through all those. Some of my y'all, y'all know I'm behind in the thoughts. I mean, the messages. What she said? Thank you, Essie. It's crazy after more than you can imagine. I'm not making this up. It's so real. You know what? Thought oh, you ain't got to tell me. I know it's real. And really, y'all, uh, being on this platform like this, like it made me want. I got if if I wanted to. I could come on every single day of the week and give y'all a case about stuff that's going on every single day of the week. You know, I try to give myself some rest periods in between because it's really overwhelming. 
black women are one of the most dogged out as race of women that I've ever seen before in my life. And it continues to happen. I want to tell y'all something about what happened um, with the therapist and the three-year-old little girl. But I got to wait till I go back and address this letter because we got a phone call from one of the guys. But I want to let her come on and explain it and let me get the video together because until this lady go to court in June, we're going to keep riding all the way out with it. And also, you guys, I have a case coming up April the 8th. Y'all don't know this young man, but he's in jail because his girlfriend lied on him. It's so many men that's in jail because of a lie that a female told. And it's so many women vice versa, the same thing. But women, y'all get real trifling with it when you get mad. This baby is 30 years old. He's been sitting for 40 years, I mean, uh, four years in jail because the woman got mad that he didn't want to pay her bills no more and pretty much was his first love. And right now, some other things are going on behind closed doors and I'm trying to get it that they will release him and give him time served because they like he beat her down and nothing. He snatched her up off of him because she was jumping on him. But there's other things that go on with that that I can't really just talk about right now. But I have to say, this is what makes me stand. This is what made me fight. So any negative people that's on the internet talking about me is really just making it more positive. And the people that's talking all that negative about me, people like really realizing like these people got a personal bandana. Is something wrong with them? Why are they lying like that? So it's really not making me look bad. It's just really helping me more show the personal bandana that Steve Harvey had against me. And he got other people paying other people to come. And I say paying, if I'm lying, then go to court and sue me. Paying other people to try to violate me and stalk me. But that isn't in my mind right now. What's in my mind is change. What's in my mind is justice. What's in my mind is standing for the truth. And that's what it should be about with anybody else who comes over here. And if you got a true story, if you got something you want to say, if you got something you want to speak about, that's why I brought Shy on the platform today. I didn't want to sit up there and answer all the questions behind closed doors with, um, with, um, oh, he said, who, who right cross called her mommy? She said, I sure am, mommy. Who he called her mommy? Uh oh. Um, um, if I say something in a, a way that you don't like it, or y'all ask me a question, I don't want to just like discuss it with one person because maybe somebody else might want to hear it. So that's why I wanted to come on with Shy and let her ask me the questions because I don't have nothing to hide because those same questions, you might want to ask the questions too. So I hope I did that. And I hope that I answered everything that we ain't got to talk about the sex tape. But if y'all get to see the pictures and this tape is out, if there's a tape, then let me know. Okay, I don't know how this little raggedy person got by, but let me read it. It say, happy, happy. Essie, you didn't show up for court and you didn't answer the summons. That's why you have a warrant. Okay, I don't stay in uh, Texas. There is no summons for me to go into Texas. I shouldn't have had to go to Texas, no way. I was in the middle of my court case when you tried to ask me for a summons. So they tried to give me a summons on the same day that I went to court. Happy, why are you so happy over here? You trying to do something? So listen, I don't give a flip about that. I don't care about that summons or that warrant. Y'all can eat shit and die. That's what I meant with that. Now, if you want to sit down and make a good proposal for this nigga end up like Diddy, then I suggest you do so. Because Essie Berry, I ain't like the average sister. I'm not going to just happy hap, go away and shut up. Happy hap, happy hap said Now, you know what? She said, Mary said, Mary, so Mary told you she realized I was lying snake. Now, what if I put out that letter just saying what Mary said about all y'all? Mary said they blackmailed her into signing some letters trying to get her to walk away from me. And I got two witnesses that heard that. So, no, y'all niggas are the lying snake because I intimidate you. This probably sound like Bobby Edme. You to change your name, Happy Nate. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, oh, happy snake. What she said, and what side care, don't care who claimed you as a lying daughter looking for sympathy everywhere. Leave me alone. Never came for you. But the one thing you got mad is what was true. Send for me. 
Yeah, she ain't better say for nobody. The old lady's a liar. The old battle axe is a liar. Ain't nothing to talk about. She wanted sympathy and she wanted me to cut Linda off because Linda checked her. I'm not gonna cut nobody off because nobody checked nobody because you should have been talking in the box in the first place about some shit that didn't even matter. And then you want to get all discombobulated. Ain't nobody coming for nobody. Y'all better seek the kingdom and don't worry about the rest. Look at God. I love y'all. Hey, Sam. Look, no, Sam. What you tell my Sam? Sam say, hey, Essie Berry. Hey, Sam's like the Sam's. Okay. Oh, uh, thank you, Rocky Robin. Thank you so much, Shy. Thank you, Miss BB. I'm trying to make sure I get all the questions. Now, I don't know if Happy ain't going to give me no happy news. Happy, get your happy, happy ass up out of here. Can you go happy, 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 happy? Can you go somewhere else, please? Psalms, you better go put on a shirt. Psalms, Psalms got a shirt off. So I'm better go put your shirt on for somebody to get you over here. Miss Valerie and White right Cross, that's so special. Whatever site this is, need to stop. Let me know. We'll see. What what's she, what they say? Y'all right. Now y'all got some slow cheering over here. Whatever site this is, need to stop. Stoop. What? 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 Y'all see that? Okay, Miss Armstrong. I don't know what you're saying. Capital E, small E. Stop me. Stop E. I don't know. Arm says they get a life and go. Well, bitch. Why we gotta get a life and go? There? Need to stop. Why? Why we gotta get a life and you need to why? We are your library. That's why you're over here. Get a life to go to the library. Get a life to go to the crackhead house. I mean, you know what I'm go on a platform. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, she ain't on the track. Right across a um, homegirl. Y'all tell me he be rolling women. Y'all, they say, they said right cross is my pimp and I'm his whore. Bill, I'm going to be a high price paid one. You better know about that. You better know that for real. But high, right across, say he hired right now. What? What's the name? Armstrong. He said he'll put you on the track. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go on, Armstrong. Miss Valley say God will bless you with a man. Willie, what? Say it, Miss Valley. Let me sit up a little bit. Let me sip to that. Miss Valley said, "Amen." God will bless you with a man that is equal yoke with us. That's why people end up with someone that is not right for them. And you know what? If people need to really notice that men or women, they are, if they're not equally yoked, they're not going to stay. You know what I'm saying? Like like right now, I'm still in right cross circle one way or another because he's my protector. You get what I'm saying? He said he was, I was his assignment. You know what I'm saying? So as far as that, I cannot knock that because that's what he said God told him. You know what I'm saying? And I would be for him in any type of way that I need to be there for him, you know, on a spiritual level. I think Right Cross is a, a dynamic person, a good dude. I really think that, like, whatever God has for him, he's so tremendous that he's going to bless him with the right person and all that in his circle. Essie needs to pick some berries. Do I, girl? How you know I ain't already picked some? You already have some. That's why she over. You want some of this berry? I'm strong. I don't go that way, though. Straight up. You can't get none of these berries. You can't get none of these berries. <laughs> berries. Boo, I can, you can't get none of this, I'm strong. <laughs> RuPaul motto, if you don't love yourself, how to, hey, if you don't love yourself, how you gonna love somebody else? That's what RuPaul said. Can I get an amen? Like, that's right. How the hell are you gonna love somebody else? So y'all just gonna let this hooker stay in the box. So I'm gonna keep putting. Oh, yeah. it. See, you need a senior tech sex tape, a senior at 55 and not 21. Okay. Oh, oh, y'all want me to do one at 55? Y'all want me to bang it out? Don't make me. Don't make me. Don't make me. Don't make me get on that pole. I'm like, I'm like, I'm with them, baby. She said, you need a sex tape. I wish I would do a sex tape at 55. Oh. Spiritual discernment. What did Rock Ross say? Those without spiritual discernment will not understand the things of the spirit. That's so true. Now the idiot wants to come on here. Who is the idiot? Who wants to come on here? Don't block nobody, baby. 
be anxious for nothing, but in everything, make your request be known by prayer and supplication. Well, thank you, Mr. DM. Yes, sir. I got a request, and God going to send it to me. He ain't going to send no mess. And it's been 10 years, you guys. Whatever's for me is already going to be there waiting for me and ready when God prepared it. Not man, for sure. And that's what people got to look at. Who, who was going to talk about? Who, who she talking about somebody coming for her? What are you talking about? They, they supposed to be having... Look, I'm going to tell y'all something. Let me know what day y'all want to do. If y'all want to do a Tuesday, I want to have a day. Because you know, I've been wanting to say this for a minute. I want to have a day just for the damn subscribers. So y'all can come over here and chat and I can get in y'all business. Y'all be having some hellacious conversations in this box. Y'all be having y'all own conversations. Can I get a little bit of it too? You're welcome, Shy. Most definitely. You good. Who hope who all right? Shout time out. Thank you, BB. Most love to you. I thank you. And thank you, Thought. And again, if you need me, I'm a phone call away. Don't be looking at how I be tripping on this internet. I just get raw when other people get raw. Y'all, y'all move happy. Y'all didn't move happy, did you? I'm looking for some more. Happy, 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 happy. Why are we gonna why y'all gonna fire the pastor? What pastor y'all finna fire? Y'all ain't finna fire um pastor who? Who y'all finna fire? What are y'all talking about? What pastor y'all finna fire? Okay, let me move like this. My email is my name. And then I'm going to let, right across, what do y'all put in the box? Let me see if I can show it. Let me see, see, so you can see it. That's my number, Thought. 747-248-6433. 747-248-6433. And you know my name is Essie Berry. Here it is right here. Right across, put that up there. EssieBerry54 at gmail.com. Well, you guys, I hope I just lost my wrench. No, you. I didn't think I would get you a wrench. I, I mean, I'm going to get you one when we get off here. I got you, DM. I got you. <clears throat> and she said, I don't see dice, but dice is fake. I said it. Um, Dice. Okay. I, I, I just want to clown some people since they want to leave comments about Essie, you were summoned to Texas. Okay. That's not like some slavery stuff. Don't send me, don't send no summons. That sounds like slavery. Don't be talking about no switches. That sounds like slavery. You can get more out of me with honey than you can get with bitter. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can react in real time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Miss K, um, she tried to tune in. I don't know, y'all. We got bad weather coming this way. I might come on Sunday. I may not because I know we're supposed to be having some real bad weather. I'm so grateful that we didn't plug out right now because we still been having some uncanny weather for some reason. I said what I said the way I said it. I meant what I said the way I said it. I hope you guys join us tomorrow for Thursday Therapy, Friday for a recap Friday. Not sure about Sunday. We will be on, uh, I mean, not sure about Saturday. We will be on Sunday. She said hooked. And then um, we'll kind of go from there, you guys. I just sent out an email to you. Okay, baby, I'll check my email. And make sure you put your phone number with it. Thank you. She, she said, I'd rather drink muddy water and sleep in a hollow log than mess with some of the... Woo! That was kind of deep, DM. DM said he would rather drink muddy water. Like you dislike women like they say muddy water and sleep in a hollow log than mess, than to mess with some of these women. Y'all women, we got to do a better, we got to do a better thing with our men. Our men shouldn't feel like that. What's the hollow log about? He, he said, I don't even need a log with nothing in. I need a hollow log. Something that you can't even, whatever. Okay, okay, DM. DM said, give me a hollow log. You guys, 
thank you guys for participating today with me, joining me in this little, um, whatever this was, this conversation today. I hope I answered everyone's questions. It's a lot of great things that's happening behind closed doors. I refuse to let the enemy make me something that I'm not begin angry, upset. God is good for everything he has done for me and the way he has done it for me. I will continue to do whatever I have to do. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I can talk as much smack as I want to. I will cuss you out and I will ask Jesus for forgiveness. At least you know I'm not a hypocrite. I keep it 101. Some people like to lie and act like they all this and they keep wasabi. If you don't do stuff behind closed doors, that's really not me. I do know that I bring a great deal to the table as far as people are concerned. And that's what I need to focus on now. And every day again, as I wake up, I'm either working on a case or trying to help someone in some kind of way. But like I said, on April the 8th, I have a client that's going to um, be standing before a judge. I will get his name and or just maybe I'll give you a nickname to him. And I want y'all just to get out prayer for me just for April 8th because I need this baby to walk out of jail. He ain't but 30 years old, y'all. He shouldn't be in jail like that. There's no way he should be in jail. And he done sat four years and ain't no kind of trial came, came his way. So next week, uh, Monday, I'll be trying to help the auntie get to everything, strategize the grandmother before he go to court on the 8th. So my days are always busy. And I have to say, too, like, it's only one of me, you guys. I don't have a lot of people helping me. And I really don't want to have a lot of people helping me because I don't know if you're going to fight the case like I do or you're going to pay attention like I do. So please forgive me if I do not answer every call because I be trying to. But whether I do or not, I really need people to know that God is everlasting. And we got to keep folks on that. And he's not just bringing me people to go off on them or not help him. He's bringing people to me because he knows that I'm the one that can change the situation for whatever reason. And I'm humbly grateful for that. And Miss Carol, again, I'm so grateful that you're doing better with your beautiful self. And you're able to come on this platform and enlighten me and let me know what you feel. And I want to say again, I thank God that you're healthy because that kind of bothered me when you were sick. You know what I'm saying? Because I do wear my sleeve on my shoulder. And like that's why they were talking about this other girl who went over there or whatever. I really don't like that she did that because I didn't deserve that. And she was an older lady. And I'm called and trying to make sure she's okay. And to say that I did support her and try to lie, that's the kind of stuff that makes me don't want to be close with people. And sometimes I can't do that. You still have my prayers, my backing, whatever you need. Doesn't matter. Continue your walk with Christ. And don't let these devils get you distracted from the path Christ has designed for you. Well, this 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 week, this month coming up, you guys, I'm going to do live a lot of recaps on the stuff, a lot of this positive stuff, the sermons, the church stuff that the guys did. So I'll be sharing that in, in April some to you with you guys, too. So if they miss something, they can see it. Uh, and two hours, 50 minutes, we ain't that bad. I want this kind of shorten it down, but I don't like to rush people. I like people to get out what they're going to say. So if that means that I'm saying, like you said, something on this platform and I can let you say it. I want you to get out what you have to say because that's what we're here for to try to change and make something different. Good night to you guys all and join us this Sunday. I think it's um is this Easter Sunday this Sunday? Reverend it Dula. is. It sure is. Well, Reverend Dula is gonna be up in the house this Sunday. So I go see gonna be on time. I gotta get with him and get the time frames and everything like that. And I have to say again, you guys, to me, knowledge is power. Give what is given. For every action, there will always be a reaction. Please don't worry about what people have to say about you. Worry about what God has for you. Man will talk about you and let you down, but God is everlasting. He will always be around. Know what you are trying to do in your circle and don't let the negative energy, because if you continue to allow a negative energy to come into your force or your circle or your surroundings, then you will project that negative energy too. You draw what you are. And if you draw something that's negative and you know it's not you, then you need to walk away before it destroys you. To that, you guys, God bless you guys. I had fun tonight. Much love to you guys. Um, I look forward to seeing y'all in a couple of days. Well, tomorrow, actually, um, unless something go wrong. If something go wrong, I won't be on the platform. But from what I understand, we will be doing it tomorrow with her. 
And then after we start getting into the groove on Thursdays, if there is someone going through something psychologically or mentally, or it's a question that you can ask, she's given the three question rule. So if you decide you want to pop it tomorrow, you got three questions, the three questions and stay on that topic. That way we don't get thrown off and we all over the place. To that, you guys, good night. God bless you guys. Love you guys. And see y'all soon. Bye. Love y'all.